and now they can hear us. So hi everybody, um, welcome to session 29 of True Neutral. I'm Caitlin, I'm the dungeon master for True Neutral. We have our, our players over here, we have, we have Jacob, and we have Kiefer, and we have Tyler. And Tyler is new today, Jake is not with us, he's on a business, business trip or something like that, so he's not here. But we have Tyler, which means that we have a new, a new player character, and he'll be introduced later, it's, it's going to be awesome. But um, yeah, we're, we're True Neutral, we're a live dark fantasy tabletop stream. We focus on cinema, realism, storytelling, and roleplay in tabletop. Those are the things that we try to promote through our gameplay. Before we get started, we have a few announcements, a couple of which are super, super duper exciting. People are saying, hey, Tyler. Welcome, Tyler. Hey, hey guys. Hello. Hey guys, what's up? Hey guys, what's up? Jake. Like I said, we're, we're missing one Jake. We'll get that Jake back later. Um, in that same vein, you guys can use Command Bram 1 and Command Bram 2. So those, those are some new <laughs> some new commands we have for, for Jake slash Bram. We already talked about Tyler being here. You'll see his character soon. We launched our first t-shirt on Teespring. Uh, we've already reached our minimum, which means they're going to print, they're going to ship out. And you have until oh, next Thursday. Thursday of next week. So not this week, but next week uh, to order them. I think they're super cool. You know, we, we designed them. We like them. We're going to be wearing them. So if you want to support realism and uh, storytelling in tabletop with a super duper cool true neutral shirt. I mean, if you want to stay true or something. If you want to like stay true. That's what the shirt says. It says stay true on it. It's got like the little true neutral symbol on the back. Anyway, I think it's pretty cool. Um, you can use command it, t-shirt and that command will work mm -hmm. because that's through Nightbot. Yeah. So yeah, our, our, our bot is doing, true neutral bot's doing something weird right now, but you Take can use the use that through Nightbot. And it comes in neutral colors, <laughs> black and white and gray. So that's that. And lastly, we uh, are experiencing some really stormy weather here. So if we disconnect, if we, you know, if our stream goes down, we're gonna go ahead and keep playing because we record this stuff, we put it up on YouTube. That way, you know, there's not a big weird break in uh, in our in our game for you What's to watch later. On? So if it happens, we're so sorry. We can't control it. You can't control it. Earthquake. But you can watch it on YouTube later to catch up. So that's that. And that's all the announcements. Stroke out. Stroke out. <laughs> that's all the announcements. So the recap. <clears throat> the recap of of last time for the for the main group. This is this is for the main group. And I think think what I'll do is I'll probably do the main group now. Then we'll play. Then we'll do do the recap for you because you do have like a mini recap don't give me that look so big points are that Ezra Vath declared war on Warish that's a huge deal that has a lot of implications um, for you guys as you know people traveling through the countryside interesting interesting it's an interesting development you're from Warish <laughs> uh, no, he doesn't, that <laughs> he doesn't say that anymore he doesn't say that anymore the party was attempting to leave Crescent Keep when a portal opened up in the Northgate district and a demon stepped through. You and Bram totally you slayed the demon. And Bram uh, credit is due. banished the demon back to its back to its plane in Abaddon. <laughs> and then you you <laughs> talked you talked in Mintha Smithy. All of you did. You were there with, with Ute and Bram and Cole and Griffin. Sorry. I say all of you. You'll be all of us soon. Not yet. Stay the fuck away. Excluded. Um, and Joffrey, you all had a, a really long, serious talk about being together as a group and what that was going to take. Because Cole, I mean, you pretty much revealed that you're a warlock, and Bram didn't seem too cool, into that idea. Um, in fact, he was pretty aggressive about it. But. You brought so, up some so interesting, brought up some interesting points that you know sometimes the followers of Eldronus do some 
pretty terrible things and you reference Joffrey who seems to agree with you. So everyone's got something to deal with right now. But Griffin kind of laid the like the plan out of, of things that were possibly going to happen and you know if this, this is what's going to happen and you can either stay with the group or you know if you're not cool with it you don't have to be here and nobody left. So it seems like everyone's everyone's going to stick together. Well, I guess you left. You teleported to Moonwatch, where you dropped Ute off, essentially, because he's not, he's not too keen on traveling and adventuring and battling dragons. That's just but not, the, it's not him. The glorious coven leader will always be in our hearts. In our hearts. He's, um, seems like he's going to get a pretty sweet gig with, between being a, a liaison for Moonwatch and the Coven of Frost Witches. Oh, yeah, that should do well outside. for him. That's, it seems like I mean, he would a, do pretty well. He's like a foreign minister now. Yeah, it's, I mean, it seems like he's going to do pretty great. You're so welcome. That's, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much us. That's, that's, that's pretty much, we that's pretty much the, the main group. We have rooms at the palace and we're uh, doing stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll start with, with Bernard, actually. And I'll do, you know, your quick recap. But first, let me set up, let me set up the audio and stuff. Yeah, feel free to run this. Super excited, everybody. Here we go, let's see. Oh, by the way, uh, crit falls on skill checks don't exist anymore. So just do your total. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, by the way. Oh, by the way, this is a thing. By the way, major game changers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's always been like kind it's of a. Game. It's always kind of been there, but I never really like declared it openly to you guys. <clears throat> so, you know, now it's just out in the open. So, if anybody's ever wondering why we are failing less, we're not doing critical fails. Well, you, you won't be failing less. Checks. I mean, that's just. If we don't declare something like that. Yeah. Actually, you Garen had a pretty good point on that last stream. I saw what? it during the rebroadcast, and it, it's never been a thing that's been a rule, even in traditional D and D. It's just people just like it for yeah. skill checks. People just like it. I mean, it's simple. It's a simple. Oh, that a one is a one. Mm -hmm. And a twenty is a twenty. It, it's it's a, it's just for uh, combat, right? Yeah. So anyway, well, everybody can like. Grasp the idea of just like, oh, you know, your your hands all sweaty and your sword flies out of your out of your grip. Like that's the one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I feel like there's a lot of ammo there for people in the chat room. Pumps. Oh, you mean just because like the slipping the like, grips with the uh, like, long spaghetti and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Long shafts of steel. Hilts. Are you gonna be that person tonight because Jake's not here? Don't. <laughs> I mean, our, I'm our only, innuendo guy. I'm only bouncing off, uh, <laughs> off of the material available. <laughs> that's, that's a yes. If you would like to elevate the conversation, I'll do my. Oh, you're right. You're right. I started. You're All right. right. You guys can hear. I'm talking to the players, by the way. You guys can hear this, okay, right? Yeah. Yes. All right. Fantastic. So. Let me, uh, there, now your name, Bernard, is appearing Sweet. Um, where you are. And let me change the background to reflect that you are indeed in Crescent <laughs> Keep. It's somewhere. There it is. Okay. So, um, the past couple of weeks for you have been pretty rough. You were you were traveling with Waylon, and you you ended up in this really small, really small village where they were talking. You you heard rumors of there there being some sort of beast problem. They they didn't really specify what was going on, but you and Waylon gathered enough information by listening. Um, you didn't ask any questions or really you know, assert your presence mm -hmm. anywhere because that's not your style. That's not how you operate. You gathered enough information to figure out that whatever it was was something really dangerous, was something you should probably take care of because it was eating livestock and dragging off huntsmen and things like that. So
so you and Waylon on horseback traveled together and you were kind of making your way just across the across the continent I mean sort of traveling aimlessly and helping who you could where you could so you tried to track this creature uh, and this was a little bit I believe this village was a little bit outside of Old Marsh I think is where you were you tried to track the creature and you just you, you couldn't find it. Um, the tracks like led off into the into this river, and there was just no way to no way to follow it. So you you kind of gave up. Mm. Um, but a little while later, as you're you know traveling through the along the bank, you're trying to go around the river. You don't trust it. You know you're afraid you might be swept off your horse. You were assaulted by bandits. As you're traveling close to the woods, that sort of thing just happens when you do that, and then. When you had just about dispatched all of the bandits, uh, the beast kind of jumped on all of you. Wayland was snatched up and taken off into the woods, and you weren't fast enough to, to catch the creature. Uh, the last that you saw, you kind of did you know a roundabout chase of this thing, you know, chasing it with your sword, and the creature dived into the water, and you can't swim, and so you had to watch it sort of drag Wayland away, and then that was that. He was your last companion, and you're traveling alone now, and you have been for the past two and a half weeks, almost three weeks. You arrived in Crescent Keep. It's the largest city you've ever been in in your life. It's, um, it's massive, and you really had no idea where to start when you got here. I mean, you're just traveling. You hear a lot of languages you don't recognize. There's, you know, still a lot of people who speak Braddish, but, you know, there's something about being in this capital port city that just, there's so many different kinds of people here. So it's, all, the, all at the same time, it's, it's impressing, or impressive, but it's also overwhelming. So, you know, you, you got about a day's worth of, of all of this within the city, and no one really caused you any problems. Uh, you didn't really talk to anybody. I mean, you're a pretty... Um, unobtrusive figure as it is mm. but you were about to leave the city to just go outside get some fresh air get away from the stink of the stink of the city mm -hmm. um, whenever there was a there was commotion in the, in the district that you found yourself in again because you were trying to get to the gate to get out and a demon stepped through from a portal to Abaddon you recognize this for what it was, but before you could sort of get in and, and jump on this uh, this fight, a another group of people kind of took initiative and took care of it. And it was terrifying and impressive all at once. You watched all of it, and your first thought after everything kind of settled down was possible traveling companions, because you've been alone for so long, and it's it's dangerous to travel by yourself. And these people, they seem capable to, to do the kinds of things that, that you do all the time. Unfortunately, you weren't able to engage them immediately. Uh, battle mages swept through the district, trying to clear everyone out, um, making sure that no one was touching any sort of demonic artifacts left behind or anything like that. You hid, and while you were hiding, you saw that group kind of slip into this, uh, this house next to the smithy. And so... You hid for a, a long while waiting for the mages to disappear and finally for people to be allowed back into back into the district. You saw two figures go into that house where the group had disappeared earlier and then they went inside and, and closed the door. So you're across the street from this house in the smithy. There are people milling about all over the place now. Um, you know, there are still... There, there are no... Uh, you know, huge piles of rubble or, any, or you know damaged buildings or anything anymore because mm -hmm. the, the mages have come through and cleared most of that out. But there are still people milling about trying to find uh, loved ones and, and mm -hmm. things like that because you know you did see a lot of people get hurt when that demon was tearing tearing through the district. Mm -hmm. So you're standing in a sort of narrow alleyway and you're looking across at that house and at the smithy, you can see the, the two figures moving uh, in the window. It's a, it's not glass, but you can see through the, the slats of the, oh, what is it called? The shutters. Mm -hmm. That's uh, 
that's the scene. And you know that those people that you were thinking of as possible companions just disappeared into there. You have not seen them come out. Mm -hmm. Your assumption is that they're still there. Okay. You may do as you will. Okay. Um, I cross the street, um, trying not to, you know, run into anybody and they make too much attention um, and I approach the door to this building okay um, and I kind of steal myself for the thought of close social interaction um, <laughs> and I give um, a kind of half-hearted three knock just to the door okay so you're, you're standing on this little wooden porch and um, you know, people are passing all of all around you and no one answers the door for several moments though you can hear shuffling around inside and footsteps and soft voices and then finally there are footsteps coming to the door and the door opens up the person who answers is um, entirely exotic from what you've experienced in life she is very obviously a half elf uh, but her her skin is a kind of a dark cocoa color mm -hmm. and she she wears her hair in dreadlocks she's dressed as a man and is wearing um, a heavy smith's apron she she answers the door and her eyes immediately drop to your your sword at your at your hip and you you know you can you watch her taking note of this and the only time you've ever really had that problem is when people are afraid of you mm -hmm. or when people expect to fight you so hopefully it's uh <laughs> you know it's <laughs> the better one of those. <clears throat> she raises her chin at you and, and she says, Yeah? Oh, uh, good morning, ma'am. I, I do not mean to um, harm you. Uh, I have a weapon and a shield, but um, uh, you need these accoutrements to navigate these parts. Um, I'm rambling. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> were there two gentlemen that came in here the other day? I'm out looking. of game, you mean today, right? Mm. Out of game. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Mm. There are some people I'm looking for, and I believe they're still in this, this building, your, your home, or place of business. Have you seen them? I, I, I very much want to talk to them. Who do you mean? What do they look like? Out of game. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, um, what do they look like? Sure, so uh, the most notable of all of them was the tallest one. Mm -hmm. uh, he has his hair cut in an exotic style. It's it's in a mohawk, okay. and um, in, you're not you're not heavily armored, Griffin. But you know, you you are wearing armor. You do have two maces uh, on your hips. I mean, you're. You weren't dressed in your silks, right? You were in your armor, right? Yeah, it was the scorched leather and okay. the black cloak. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so, and we, and we can just say, you know, you describe this, describe mm -hmm. this to her. And she kind of squints her eyes a little bit and looks unsure. And she says, wait here. And she closes the door. Mm -hmm. We're gonna hop over to you, Griffin. What are you doing? Sitting in that main room in the palace with Joffrey. That's right, that's where you are. And Here, uh, let, me, let me switch the background since we're somewhere else. I think Bram had already gone off to take a nice long rest. Yeah, in I, th one I room. think Bram was ready to, ready to crash. I'm pretty sure he's asleep already. And you had just like... I needed to go do some things with Brain Root. <laughs> so you went off into a different room? Yeah, uh, I guess to, to whatever I presume to be my, my quarters for the night. Take a peek. How, how many rooms do we have off this main one? There are, I believe, five rooms. Cool. Okay. That's enough for everybody, I think, right? I think so. So just a moment ago, I got on my bestiary and I'm kind of going over it. And I have the charcoal out. And just going over it, sitting next to Joffrey. Okay. So Joffrey is not uh, Joffrey is not seated 
Um, if anything, he seems like he's... Oh, it's fine. It, it seems like he's kind of anxious. Um, he's pacing around the room, and at first it seemed like he was, look, you know, admiring the architecture and things, but if you ever really stop to watch him, he's he's not looking uh, around at the, at the architecture. Um, he has his hands folded behind his back, and is just nervously pacing. What's the matter with you? It was a beautiful... You're making me anxious. Stop that. He looks uh, startled, and he stops, and he, he kind of he comes over to you, and he says, uh, "How do you know those are the jewels?" Would it put you at ease if we were to look at them? Yes. What if we brought someone dangerous? We'll be on the road before too long, and I'll show you then. Outside of Pit Medin. Until then, look at this with me. He kind of begrudgingly comes over and, and sits next to you. Tell me whether or not you agree with some of these things that I've written. He leans over to look at the book, I believe, that you have, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Or tell me the name. You've already told me of the Manticore in the Chimera. What are the names of these things? And is a sketch of uh, the fish people from the cave I meant this place? Oh. The fish mutants. Gross, that's right. That's out of game, by the way. Yeah. Um, so Joffrey, Joffrey's brow pulls to, his brows pull together and he, he doesn't seem to have any clue of what, to, what name to give that. And then there'll be fish monster humanoids. Never mind. He ends up kind of reaching over as though he's going to pull the book onto his lap. Do you allow him to do this? Yeah, yeah if, if, you'll, if you'll hand me that. Okay. I think I can reach it. Thank you. And let me know if you can't read it. Griffin's a bad writer. It's just Griffin. I uh, know I can read all of it. It's fine. I have game. I can read all of it. It's fine. Yeah, he's just going to be reading through this. Cole. You're in your room. Yes. <laughs> Is there anything that, you know, you'd like to like to make known that you're doing or or, or would you rather well, rather not? No, no, that's fine. Um so I start uh I remark that after two times in which I was rebuffed and rather insistently I do hope that he has the uh, temperament and understanding to recognize that now of all times should not is not a time to uh, t to ignore me so I, I start uh, grinding some rain root and making preparations for uh, communion okay um, your door does indeed have a lock you are able to lock it. And if you do plan on uh, doing what it is I believe that you're doing, um, you'll know that you're, you're, uh, your consciousness is going to be pulled elsewhere, leaving you vulnerable. I think, well, that Bram guy seems pretty put out, but <laughs> I don't know how long this is going to take and I don't want to invite any unnecessary cause for alarm. Mm-hmm. So I go ahead and lock the door. Okay. Give me just a hot second here. I'm gonna find something. You guys can talk as you will, because this may take me just a minute. I'm sure that someone will answer you eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Oh yeah, I'll be You're right back. You're just like out here standing in the middle of range, just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Our character will do that. <laughs> <laughs> like you all night, yes. Like <laughs> with your, uh, I heard stories of. He's uh, still out there. Turkeys. <laughs> I told him like, to come back and have him come back. It's been forty-five minutes and he's still there. You know, like turkeys in the rain will drown in mass oh, numbers because they uh, they'll stare up at the sky. Don't chickens do that too? Transfix at thunderstorms and they'll drown chickens because of the amount of water ride. they're drinking. Another coal effect. This has been the more you know with coal. We have a segment. 
like a little animation that spins across the screen. You guys are distracting me. I can't work with a Joffrey because he's distracted by a computer. <laughs> um, I can't roll play with you because you're in your room doing something. I'm just masturbating. Go away. <laughs> can't roll play with you because you don't exist to me yet. Because <laughs> you're not real yet. Sandy Claus. Hey, chat room. Yeah, Sorry about up, your immersion. Chad? It's really cool. We saw some new people when we started earlier. It's really good to see you. Hope everybody's excited to learn more about this new player. I know I am. <laughs> if you guys don't chill about the immersion, I swear I will cut the stream. See if I don't. I'm gonna give you a new command that you can spam whenever we break immersion. And it's like a uh, swift rage. It's like... Uh, yeah, I, want, I thought that this thing was here and it's not here. And it's really frustrating because I thought it was here. Got it. You know? Are we going to do a Seagus Pants flight now, yeah. or...? I'm thinking that we probably will. I okay. think that's what's about yeah, to I... happen. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Sweet. I'm just hoping that this thing won't be too loud. It'll probably last me like a day. <laughs> I'm sorry if this, like, murders Party everybody warning. when it happens. Maybe headphone, headphone user warning? Alrighty. So, Cole, you cut the rain root, you breathe in the, the earthy, rainy smell that um, comes from the root, and you lie down because you understand that if your master pulls you to where it is you're trying to go, um, and you're standing up, you, you will fall. It's happened before, so you go ahead and lie down to prevent, prevent that. What is this bed made out of? This bed? This bed is down stuffed. It is a it is a nice bed. There are like pearls sewn on the cover. Don't worry about me. Stop. Stop it right now. I don't exist. I don't have a classroom. It's taking forever to load. and just like sit and sigh. You lie there for a minute and it does feel good to, you know, relax. It does. All right. Yeah, we're gonna test this. And then we're gonna test this. I used to I used to have everything like this open, uh, but then it would cause like Chrome to crash, so we stopped doing that. Necessary. Necessary. Avoiding. It might have actually been what was causing the delay and stuff. Maybe. Yeah, it might have been actually here. Another. Low wind is <coughs> cool and all. Griffin's just waiting there for Joffrey to tell him something about his cool book, and Joffrey doesn't say anything. Joffrey's reading. And I'm like, don't be up cool. All right, so it was not raining when you fell asleep, but um, you start to hear rain and thunder, and it you're kind of in this in-between dreamlike state. And then your eyes slip shut. Oh, please, God, don't be loud. You hear a crack of thunder and it's unbearably loud and it startles you and your, your eyes fly open. And instead of lying on a bed the way you were, 
you're lying on a uh, cold, wet stone. And you, you sit upright, and there is a, a red glow uh, being cast over everything. And the glow itself is coming from the rolling, tumultuous clouds above, which are constantly snapping lightning and pouring rain. Um, the stone that you're on is not simply a stone, but it's actually, you're in the mountains somewhere. And you're very, very high up, because when you go to stand, the wind whips around you, and it catches your, you know, catches your cloak, and very nearly pulls you off of the very small uh, area of stone that you're standing on. You do not see your lord about anywhere, but you know that he's accepted you to step into his realm, and so he must be about somewhere. And perhaps he can hear you. Well, I don't suppose it would be quite respectful to um, take a wee off the edge of this particular mountainside. I walk around, I guess I like maneuver my way uh, mm -hmm. off this off this precarious little perch that I'm on sure. and start towards like I guess the center I'm not gonna like call out or anything but um you feel a heavy presence almost as if someone is uh leaning on your back on your shoulders so he's about somewhere my lord I beg your presence there is a flash of lightning, and the thunder that, that rumbles overhead rumbles down and into the mountain that you're standing on, and you can feel it vibrate beneath your feet. And then you hear a whisper, carried by the wind, sort of all around you. And it's uh, so, so very reminiscent of a snake. And it says, I have news from the front. Your hair is sort of lifted up by that wind again, almost like a caress. The mortals of the nation on the continent of which I reside have declared war upon each other. The nation I once served before entering upon a pact with you is beset upon by its much more powerful neighbor to the west. War is good. I have come to similar conclusions. I have allied myself with a selection of varied travelers who are interested in pursuing a goal which is perhaps, however, more important. I have news, news I have utmost assurance that you yourself am quite aware of that a outsider is at the gates of this reality attempting to be breached in by antelopers upon this mortal plane. It is of no matter. Nothing is more important than souls. And you feel the rumble come through the mountain again. To that end, might I suggest a new consideration for an approach to the mustering of your ranks? You feel an ominous tremble again through the mountains and you can tell that you have pricked your lord's temper. He does not like to have his plans um, questioned or changed. Then again, you've known him to be very bullheaded. My lord, you must understand. Do not take this to be a slight upon your magnificence by a lowly servant such as myself. I wish only to offer a perspective of one who is among the group of souls which you must seek to claim? The rumbling stills, finally, but you can still feel the vibration through your bones and it's almost set you to trembling, it, like your body wants to keep up with that. And there's a long, I won't say silence because of all the rain and thunder and lightning, but there's a pause. And then your master speaks again and says, Speak. 
the human heart and consciousness is motivated by a wide variety of different conflicting desires. But an overriding majority of the time, you can coerce someone into following your set of beliefs if you present a noble ideal for them to envision themselves as a part of. There is, I am afraid to say, little appeal to be had in the overt temperament that you have, that you and the demonic kind display to our people. <laughs> There's a whispering laughter and um, you're, you're standing on a, a pretty wide, you know, pretty wide edge. You've, you're, you've made your way down a little bit away from that precarious position you were in. Um, and I'm imagining that you, you know, you're still walking a little bit closer to safety as you're speaking. And almost as though someone pushes you, just very, very lightly, uh, you feel a pressure on your back and your foot does slip. Roll reflex. I just love this guy. My boss, everybody. So that's a 14? Okay. So your, uh, your arms windmill and you manage to catch yourself before you fall to the uh, dark pit of nothingness below. And you press yourself back up against the wall. Your master seems to be waiting for you to continue. You want to attract the young, the idealistic, the able-bodied, those who are most capable of serving you in both this realm and the next. These people will not be motivated by promises of esoteric power or the simple notion of individual purpose. They need something to unite the sense of physical desire as well as ideological concern. We must craft a message that indicates a desire for wide populations to gain a sort of independence from a propagandized oppressor. So the gradual rumbling of the mountain has stilled and the the rain has lessened and you recognize this as a sign that your lord is paying closer attention to you even if it doesn't seem so much like it because he's not speaking your kind has always been oppressed even bullied at times when it was weak by the god Aldronus. A shot of like a, like a tremor, shoot, it shoots up through the mountain and you, you actually have to roll reflex again. So that's a 29? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you know, you, you throw your feet wide and your arms wide to, to balance yourself and the, the rain begins pouring down again and the wind is whipping around you and tugging you in every direction and the thunder is so loud and there is no response further than that from, from your lord but he does not speak and this continues on uh, so you have to like, yell, like shout over, yeah, like, over the, the I yell, weather. I like pig shit under my breath and then I continue on you must raise forces in recognition of an antagonist which you cannot hope to defeat on your own. However much bluster you can, mu you can muster to offend a lowly human. So, lightning cracks across the sky and uh, following sort of in the, the, the thunder is like the low moaning and screaming of tortured souls. Yes, yes, tortured souls. You must understand me, my lord. The key lies in winning the hearts of the young. We must appeal to their sense. <sighs> we must appeal to their sense of dissatisfaction with society. So the, um, the sound 
the den of everything uh, dims and then it stills as much as it can within this realm and your Lord's voice comes to you again and it feels as though someone is uh, leaning against your back and has wrapped an arm sort of around your neck and not in a tight hold but just enough to know, let you know that it's there and you can very ne nearly feel the breath uh, against your ear and your Lord says you will do this for me I shall do this in your name my Lord Of that I am sure. The hold on you releases, and the world around you becomes blurry. The sound begins to dim, and it begins to grow dark, and then everything is gone. So I guess I. I will wake on my bed or not quite yet. Okay. At a game. Good job handling that. <laughs> yeah, nice nicely done there. I know it was not a, not an easy task. Okay. So, we are back in uh back in Hold on, I have to scroll up. <laughs> Griffin, you have the jewelry box on you. Where is it exactly? It's always kept in that pouch. Okay. Um. Roll listen for me. That's good that we changed that rule. A uh, total of nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know not of what you speak. Um. So. You, you don't hear it at first, or you don't recognize it for what it is at first, and so you ignore it. You think perhaps, you know, it's noise coming from outside. But then it, it comes again, and it's louder this time, and you realize it's a tapping sound coming from your pouch. Uh, Joffrey's reading through the, the book still, and hasn't really said anything. He looks up at the tapping sound. Okay. So I'll get it out, and pull it out, and then open it pretty quickly. Kind of look into it. Okay. You open it up and immediately see uh, Mintha's face, and she kind of is, is peering into it, like she's still unsure really of how it works. So soon? Is there something you need? There's someone here for you. Did he give a name? No, he didn't. A young man dressed, dressed all in black. He carries a sword. And... Not associated with Radu? Oh, no. No, this one's still green. She puts the... She puts the jewelry box down on the table and is kind of leaning forward to... down to look into it. And she says, um... He claims to have simply seen you come into my house. That's... I'm not sure why else he... why else he wants you, but... seems like he's been following you. Well then, let's be done with this. We'll figure it out. I'll come through shortly. If you put it on the floor, not the table, I don't want to step off of that. Ah, uh, yes. She, you, you see the, uh, the room on, on her side kind of tilt and you can see random flashes of things as she moves it around and finally it settles on the floor. So I look up at Joffrey and I look over at Bram's door. Hold Back. on a second. <laughs> you, um... You're looking up at Joffrey when the door opens behind him. Cole, you have woken up and um, probably used the water in the wash basin to wash the clammy sweat off of your off of your face and neck. And uh, you you guess that probably some time has passed. Um, usually, you end up sleeping for a little bit after encounters such as that. But you hear, you know, talking and stuff outside your door, and so you open it up. You can see uh, Cole's door open and he's standing in the doorway. Good evening. It is good evening, isn't it? It's almost evening, I believe. 
Ish, good evening, Ish. We've been... Someone's looking for us. Someone has been following us. Uh, the smith said someone approached. Is this a type of follow? Is this a female follow? Or is this like a angry male with a sword and a bitch for a follow? You said a he, right? He. And he does have a sword. He has a sword. Um, that seems much more like the second. Well, would you like to go? I suppose. I'll be leaving him asleep, and I'll point towards the door where Bran went through. Yes, I'd rather think we don't want to meet strangers with swords while he is around. Joffrey kind of nods back and forth as though that's a good idea. Joffrey, are you going to stay here, or would you like to go? I'll, I'll stay here. Should we encounter a griffin or a dragon, I shall report to you our findings. You should, and perhaps you'll need this. And he, he holds up the, the beast, Jerry. <laughs> Hands it back to you. Okay. So I'll tuck that away, and then I'll look down at the jewelry box, and I'll put it down the floor, mm -hmm. and I'll crawl through. As you do, I... I ask from behind you, we're not actually going to be encountering griffins or dragons, are we? I crawl through and I'm not sure if I can hear it because of the <laughs> weird distortion of the spot. His voice does become distorted, but you understand what he says um, as you as you go through the box. I step through on the other side and then look down through the door box. I can make no promises. <laughs> We shouldn't be encountering any immediately from what he said. Yes, but what about the demons? Ooh. <laughs> demons. Jo Joffrey's face uh, kind of tightens up, and for a moment he looks sick, and he just sits back. <laughs> well, come on, then. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, don't worry, as I like go through the, uh, the, the portal thing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there'll only be the good, nice types of demons. Joffrey has folded his arms and refuses to look at you as you go through the jewelry box. Well, Cole's coming through. Um, I'm going to look at Mintha. As I'm, where did you leave him? Mintha is kind of standing back and is you know, watching the jewelry box because it's an interesting thing to watch. This is not something she sees every day. Uh, you are alone with her, by the way. Radu's not here. Um, Mintha kind of leans back just a little bit to look out the slats um, in the, um, the, the shutter. Shutter. And she says like, very, very softly to you, and he's outside still. He seems very persistent. Oh, you left the poor man outside in the middle of the rainstorm? I don't know him. Well, I suppose that's true, too. <laughs> Would you like to uh, roll spot to get a good look at what this guy looks like? Up at the slats of yeah, the... Yeah, I like uh, move up not too close to the mm -hmm. slats, but to the side of it, the mm -hmm. side of the window, and I peek through. Mm-hmm. All right. 16. Oh, here, let me change this back. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're under an overhang. You're not, you know, getting wet, but you, I mean, you were earlier because it was raining, sorry. Yeah, you're, you're wet, I'm sorry. Um, Griffin, you spot the, uh, you spot a man uh, standing outside under the overhang out of the rain. Um, do you, Bernard, want to give a description of yourself? What would you look like? Sure. Um, he's about, um, I, I guess, um, for this um, period, maybe not not so short. He's like five eight, five nine, mm -hmm. kind of. He's a um, very um, very wiry frame. Kind of has you know gaunt cheeks. A pretty thin gentleman um, with uh, kind of shoulder length um, black. Kind of kind of like the color of mm -hmm. my hair. Um, wavy hair, um, and he's got um, he's got some kind of like dull. Um, gray eyes. Mm -hmm. And your your clothing. Mm -hmm. So it's it's you know mostly I believe um, it's all 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 dark um, kind of some some close um, leather hugging with the ribs um, and. I That's believe, right, because it's that well, it's that um, long sleeved mm -hmm. <laughs> black wool shirt, and I mean it's God the beginning of summer. I believe, mm -hmm. and you're, you know, you're wearing this, this long black and wool shirt, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's probably, it's, it's kind of loose fitting, but mm -hmm. now that it's rained, I mean, <laughs> most of the time, you, the wool will wick away the water, but you mm -hmm. can't be soaked as you are out in the rain for long periods of time without it finally, you know, getting wet, so it's kind of hanging off your frame a little bit, Um, you are wearing those, uh, black dyed, quilted leathers, mm -hmm. uh, 
trousers, that sort of thing. Your shield is kept on your back, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then your sword's at your hip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. And what's your, like, appeared age? Um, late 20s, so very, um, still young, um, that the, the blacksmith noticed that I was still pretty green, so, um, <laughs> I, I do have a youthfulness about my face and the fact that I was a little befuddled when I met her. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you can tell, I'm, I'm, I'm young. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Griffin, what you see out there is a, a young man dressed in clothes that are not fit at all for summertime, um. He's dressed very drably in all black, uh, which is really not something you see here in Crescent Keep of all places. He doesn't look like he's from here. And, you know, with his, uh, with his pale skin, he, again, really doesn't look like he's from here. Um, what are you doing out on the porch? Are you like, uh, you know, he's, he's very obviously soaked. Um, kind of has, has his arms folded up around him. Looks like he's not going anywhere. Um, I guess I'll go look at him too. <laughs> That's what you see. Well, he looks like a lump of wet coal. <laughs> I'm gonna save that for later. <laughs> Mepha, do you mind if we speak to him under the awning in the smithy? Sure, just watch him. Okay, I'm gonna just go step outside. Front door. Alright, the front door opens pretty noisily i mean it's a battered old thing and would you like to describe yourself griffin what you look like as you step out and then cole following that i'm not wearing the scorched leather anymore i think mm -hmm. it's just a tunic pretty simple clothes but on top of them i do have a the material no, no water collects in the cloak of this right it just falls off oh it falls right off yeah slicks off Mm -hmm. uh, it's in, like Docker's pants. <laughs> he <was great>. um, <laughs> Basically, <laughs> uh, you might not see it right away because I'm facing you, but there is like the symbol of a. Uh, what exactly is the symbol on the cloak? Oh, so um, it is. It's embroidered in silver, um, silver thread, and it is a dragon, and above the dragon is a crescent moon um, on its back. Okay, and then the, uh, the tips of two maces poke out from underneath the cloak, and then, like this, like she said earlier, kind mm. of shaped sides, pretty stern, imposing, okay. six foot six. Ooh. Still very mm. tall. Um, Step out. Very, very tall. Uh, apparent scars are like here, and then maybe one here as well from the manticore. Can't exactly remember exactly Ugh. what that did. That there's makes something my... there. Makes the hair on my arm stand up. Yeah. Generally, that's about it. Okay. Cole. Uh, Cole's like probably about five foot ten. Okay. Uh, early early forties. Um, sort of blonde, close cropped hair. Mm -hmm. um, he has like a like a red levy like heavy leather set of like armor, but he is not wearing it right now. He seems to be just wearing a. Uh, like a loose fitting, um, like light cloth tunic and then some pants. Um, he's got pretty, um, pronounced, like noticeable difference in like his left and right arms. Um, his, his drawing arm is, uh, more swollen. Okay. Um, Definitely looks like an archer. Um, but he doesn't have a bow with him. He just has a short sword. Okay. And, um, he does seem to, um, yeah, like, he doesn't seem to have too many, like, um, facial scars. Okay. But you can tell all over, like, the parts of his, like, body that are exposed to the dude. It's like, he's into combat as a, as a general way of life and income generation. Okay. I'm gonna turn the people back on. Oh, no. All right. So... These are the two two people that step out of the building, um, and you're all on the porch. And whoever may speak first may speak first. Do what you will. People are, you know, mind you. People are still all over the place in the streets, and you know, not brushing up against you because you're up onto the porch, but they're really close by. 
Oh boy, I just love the smell of this city in the rain. Oh god. <laughs> this awning isn't very big. Let's go over here. And then uh, I'm gonna push it, like, just walk around you towards the, uh, uh, the smithy part. I'm, uh, my character is taken aback by the trust. <laughs> and I follow you. Alright. Keep in mind that we do have a sort of loud soundscape on, so keep your voices up. Okay. So I just go under the underhang. Mm-hmm. More space to not be in the ring. Yeah, so the, the forges are, are not lit. It's still warm in here, and there are still, you know, as always, glowing embers uh, within the forges. It's still warm, but it's out of the rain. Um, it's away from the people. No one's, notably, no one is really getting close to this area, and probably because it's really hot most of the time, and it's sort of just a habit to not walk close to a forge. <laughs> It's oh. uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's uncomfortable, everybody. Good, good day, gentlemen. Oh, good evening. It? It's kind of hard to tell in the rain. Um, thank you for pre relocating for this conversation. Now. All right, now before we continue, I'm going to have to explain that we're here to rob you. <laughs> I feel like I... <laughs> God, that's cool. <laughs> I swear I do not have much of wood. <laughs> Yeah, Cole just starts laughing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like you deadpan that yeah. <laughs> and then break. Uh, first, uh, let, let me introduce myself because I feel it's rude if you do not know my name. My name is Bernard. It's a pleasure to meet you. Bernard, myself, uh, Griffin, son of Hadar. <laughs> it's beautiful to meet you, sir. <laughs> Shakes um, your hand. I'm Cole. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, sir. Meets you as well. <laughs> okay, as Cole speaks, um, you do hear the, the slightest of Varen accents from him, and, and um, Varen is the language that is spoken in Warish, the kingdom that is right next to Braden, um, the kingdoms oh, that don't typically, typically get along. His I accent is not thick, speak. but it's sort of the way he, uh, the soft way that he pronounces um, his vowels. Okay. So I, I apologize. You've um, been following us. Yes. How long? N not too long. Um, you sure about that? Yes. <laughs> well, I know this must seem strange, uh, a man in all dark uh, clothes following you, but... Uh, yes, I, you, you look rather like a, like a damp chimney sweep, if I must say. <laughs> not bad words, people follow me. <laughs> You're a funny man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know how to put this, but... I saw what you accomplished. Oh, he's definitely referring to Bran's achievement and banishing the demon back to the... Um, Would you tell exactly what you were referring to? The gates of the... gate of Abaddon. Well, I was not there for that. Yes, and I was the only in the aftermath. Mighty paladin slayed the demon and banished it back into the is plane. That, is that true? Of course. Where is this paladin? Where? Well, he is... Well, I should say he was heavily exerted in his attempts, and is recuperating. Okay. I hope he is not too annoyed by the, the fact that he's not here to meet me. I am quite certain that he will not overmind much. You've been very hospitable in even speaking with me, a complete stranger, but... I must um, get to the point that I came here in front of you today to say, and that is, I think that we are a lot alike, and that we have similar goals. So soon, Cole. <laughs> what if he overheard you? Hey, uh, he might think Bernard, would you like to please roll change. listen for me? <laughs> Uh, 16. Um, yeah, so you, you would have heard this. What exactly did you say, Cole? You don't think he's into hunting dragons as well, do you? Dra dragons? <laughs> oh, yes, big, monstrous beasts with 10,000 fangs and 20 story from, wingspans. From what you know, uh, dragons, um, 
don't exist. Mm -hmm. They are not real. Okay. Dragons are but a myth. Yes, of course. I I merely jape again. Yeah, they were all uh, they were all slain a long time ago. That's okay. they used to be a thing. See, they're not a thing anymore. Totally fine. Roll listen again. <laughs> you can keep digging this hole. <laughs> <laughs> I got a nine. Okay, you don't hear this one. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and end that there. Yeah. Okay. That's enough of that. <laughs> I I do not know about this. You quest know for nothing dragons. of our goals, but uh, you you speak of slaying demons, and that is something that I think. Yes, we are. Well, if nothing else, we all tend to do a fair share of demon slaying. When it is required of us. Have you encountered many that are affected by the plague? I... I have not encountered many, but we did have a recent encounter. Outside of the city. We have. And then I'll pull back a side of my cloak and there's like a silver encircled mace. It's, it's silver encircled. tipped, I believe. Yeah, there's like a... I think it's a spiked mace and each of the spikes Yeah, the, the each flange is... Um, edged in, in silver. Yeah. And you can tell, I mean, the metal looks distinctly different. Not too many encounters, but we're prepared as much as we can be, I think. <coughs> well, the reason I'm seemingly so desperate to speak with you is that, um, in truth, I was on a mission, maybe not entirely like the mission you are currently on, but I was with a group of like-minded individuals who took it upon themselves to aid people by killing creatures and beasts. I've never faced a demon, but um, I've had my fair share of combat with creatures of the forest. I seek to make it so that less death occurs. Um, can I roll knowledge? see like if I could tell based on his manner of speaking and just like general look like whereabouts this guy's from it won't be a knowledge check but is your intelligence or your wisdom higher it'd be my wisdom roll your wisdom that's five well I mean his way of speaking does show that he's educated but other than that you can't really place um, anything else about him well with his accent he's radish that's that we do have a righteous path before us Cole I should say so just speak plainly it has been a long while since I've traveled with a group larger than three. Are you worried that I might be a burden to the group? I can show you what, uh, what the skills I have. No, I'm looking forward to being larger than three again. Good. Well, shall we use the magic mystery box? Magic mystery box. <laughs> no. So soon, I, I'm trusting, but that I do not know your ways, necessarily. I, I understand joining a group. If there are secrets that you do wish to keep from me, I, I will not be offended. I am still a stranger. There is an outhouse near the center of the city. A magic mystery box. Let us get to Special know you. Special holes. <laughs> Some of us are actually newly traveled ourselves together. <laughs> <laughs> you do seem quite the odd character. <laughs> I attempt to keep myself in good humor. I find those that uh, have good humor are good company, so... I do appreciate that. It is a big change than the, the paladin. Yes. I don't imagine he's ever laughed for longer than... What? Two seconds in his life? I'm gonna actually try and think about if he's ever laughed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm, it's okay. I'm, re I'm resetting the, uh, the town ambiance because it's doing a weird thing. <laughs> Why don't we just go across the street? I know a place, the Keg and Cork. We can get a drink, get out of the rain. We won't bother the smithy. She and did look quite um, 
annoyed by my intrusion, I apologize. She just doesn't know you, I'm sure. We'll go get a drink. Fantastic. Go to the cake and cork. You're going to the cake and cork? All right. Just a second. Dang it. <laughs> oh no! Okay. What am I gonna do? It's a literal embarrassment of riches. <laughs> That's like saying, "Can you break a hundred? <laughs> Can you break a hundred? Okay, okay, I okay. Hundred is gold, though. Yeah. So can you break a thousand? You're, everybody. Uh, uh, can you just? We're, we're just gonna not use that for right now because that's super unreliable. Ooh, just give them a gold piece and call it your tab. I was gonna do that with silver. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, either way. Alrighty. Yeah, so as we're walking over to the King Cork, uh -huh. I don't really even give you a backwards glance, and you can take that as trust or disinterest or whatever you will. Mm -hmm. I view it as that you're an experienced man and you don't really fear me. <laughs> Alright, so. Let's go find us a table, shall we? There, you're in the King Cork. <laughs> Get that that ambiance going. Uh, out of game. Uh -huh. um, was it was it this tavern where uh, Bram sat in front of the fire for like a half an hour, just like staring into? No, the he was in the market district. That was okay. in the market district. Yeah. Okay. With Ute. With okay. Ute. Okay. Oh, uh, when I go in, I just go straight for the counter. I put one silver on the counter. I don't have any pennies, and I just say, uh, "Rounds of veil." All right, so the uh, the innkeep gets you all of these things. As many as that'll get me. The and what, what exactly did you put on the counter again? One silver. It's one silver? Okay, then the barkeep snatches that up. Um, as if it's, you know, it'll melt if it sits on the countertop too long. Um, and gets a good look at you, as though to, you know, know that if you want anything else, you're not going to have to pay for it. And then uh, gives yeah. you your order. And then, uh... I'll scoop them up and go over to a table that's empty. Or if you've already grabbed a table. There is a table in the corner next to the next to the shuttered windows. Corner tables. Corner. Corner tables. That has an especially nice proximity to the shit smell by the uh, by the side of the road here. You can. It's it's wafting in through the that is through the, the window. Thing I noticed about, I noticed about this city. <laughs> but I, uh, I've. I've never been to many large cities myself, but I imagine it's a commonality. The more people you have, the more shit. <laughs> I walk up with the drinks and I pass them out. Okay. It's it's stronger ale than is served in the morning. In in the early day. Mm -hmm. Now people can really get hammered if they want to. I'm gonna toss this one back. Okay. You toss it back. It's not even that much to you anyway. Kind of a small cup. I'm just drinking this real quick. I drink with the healthy respect for the alcohol. I sip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you uh, you sip at it, um, Bernard. You haven't you haven't really had anything stronger than um, stronger than the really weak chilled wine that uh, you know you're you actually made uh, at the monastery or helped to make. And the, you've had ale before, but it's always been a very, very watered down, um, just something to drink during the day. So this is a, uh, this is new to you. This ale is quite strong. Um, to you, it's really not that strong to either of you. Is it? Maybe my experiences are a bit different, but... Um, no, no, I definitely start to feel it as well. Do you not, Griffin? Your cup's empty and you I feel like, nothing. I like hit him like <laughs> under the table. Like not like hit him, but just like to have his leg like, come on, dude, get it get with it. Cole desperately wants you to join this joke with him. <laughs> Perhaps we'll hold off on some more. No, no. You can roll sense motive if you would like. We're not gonna insult your intelligence here. 
Uh, send some move to have. <laughs> um, a 14. That's not a joke. That was a really, that was really bad slurring, by the way. That was bad, Griffin. It's been a long time since I joked to him. Oh, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Brand and you don't have to obviously to react to this or anything. It's just so <laughs> your, your character has the knowledge. Well, we're here to, uh, Bernard, you said your name was Bernard. Yes. You forgive me. We have made new acquaintances. A few of them, recently. Yes, I imagine. This is, this is what happens whenever groups come to cities. You just meet a whole new cadre of people to join your, your band. I've always hoped for it, but this is the first time in many, many ten days. Uh, but let us see if we are a good fit, if you will. And uh, forgive if we have haste. There is something important that we are doing as well. Of course. You might not have heard, but uh, Braddon has declared war on Werish, and we are making haste to be away from here. You have not heard that. That is brand new knowledge to you, and that um, that's bad. So, like, I kind of get you know, like very conspiratorial, like, down low with you. Between you and I, I believe that means that we're at war, you and I. We're personal enemies. Are you from where? Yes. <laughs> but don't tell anyone. It's a state secret. Where are you from? I am from, uh, I am from Warish. Hmm. Out again. No. You're not from Warish. You're from Bratton. Bratton, sorry. That's okay. Sorry, again. I, I still mix them up. But, yeah, you're, you're from Bratton. And you're technically, you're from Draycott. Draycott, there you go. Apologize. I'm from, I'm actually not too far from here. It's from a small town. I, I didn't really grow up in it when I was born. Draycott. You may roll wisdom to see if you know that place. Okay. Never heard of it. Forgive me. Twelve. Uh, yeah, Cole. Um... You signed a few people up there. <laughs> I have fond memories of that town. Really, I have almost none. Well, it is a miserable place. From I what helped you some remember. folk. <laughs> that seems fitting. I, I, I do what I can. How crowded is this place right now, decently? People are starting to, uh, starting to really filter in. I mean, get their drinking in for the night. But our area is kind of secluded for the moment, but it's probably not going to be for very long. You're seated at Radu's table. Nice. No no one's coming over to sit with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sweet. Fuck. Uh, right. <laughs> Bernard, just know that... Um, turn the mic a little bit more toward him, maybe. Okay. I mean, we're just kind of in the middle, then we might, we'll be... Uh, we, I just mean, when it, whenever anybody speaks softly, be sure the mic's turned toward them. Right. One day we won't have to do that, but today we do. Okay. Before we were swamped with the locality. Oh, I know not of what you speak, I say as I fill another glass. <laughs> <laughs> Our major tasks are these. We are dealing with dragons. They are not myths. We are fighting demons. We are fighting Wicked beasts. Beasts. We Wait are... thousand leagues high. Do they measure? So dragons do exist. They exist, and we are so going to... <laughs> Okay. We are going to talk to them. It's, dragons have items we need, and we get the items, and we, we compile them all together. Uh, are dragons amicable? Some of them. Cole, um, as you're like flapping your arms, um, you you notice that there are a couple people at a table nearby that are staring at you. <laughs> I like look back at them with like cup in hand and do one of those. Uh, so the the bearded man who's one of the, one of the men who's watching you kind of. <laughs> uncertainly and goes goes back to drinking. They they stop looking at you. <laughs> Go ahead, Griffin. I've introduced, my, introduced myself already. Griffin, son of Adar. I am from the lands of the north, the tundra. Closer to Shuna than here. You're not sure where that is, Bernard. Can't say I really know much about that place. It's an odd place. Don't I, go there. I will say that my understanding of the world, the greater world around me, is pretty small. And you've spent much of your life in one place? Indeed. Uh, from Draycott to where we currently are now, that's about mm -hmm. it. A straight line. Did you... What is it that you did with your youth? 
So, this might be a long story. Well, I suppose a tavern is as good a place as any to tell it. We do have a long road ahead of us as well. I'm mostly interested in what you can offer us now. Okay. Well, I will do an abridged version of what I was going to say. From a young age, I was taken, um, not taken, more given, um, to a monastery um, where I was brought up, educated, and now I am faithful, quite faithful, uh, to my Lord Dyrath. So you're a... Is this what Joffrey called a... A black dark magician? Dark magic? A partition of the dark arts? Out of game. Okay, so... Mm-hmm. You cast dark miracles. Mm-hmm. You and your brothers refer to them as miracles, but... Because they're so different, a lot of p- other people like to classify them as dark. Mm-hmm. And technically, they you could call them dark miracles because, you know, the energy does come from the dark plains, that's where Dyrith resides. But it has such an ugly connotation to it, and a lot of people believe that they're scary things and that they're actually hexes, and they simply call it dark magic, which it is not. With that knowledge, there you, uh, there you are. You've taken quite the risk, listening to me, hearing me out, having a drink with me. So I will be as truthful as I can. I've been taught that many view the magic that me and my brothers form to be dark. Before you continue, I should say that only one of us really cares in the party. You might, but I think it's more important to us that you have knowledge which we actually need to seek. This meeting is possibly told by fate. We were told recently, not we, but the paladin and myself were told that to seek answers for something that plagues us, we need to seek someone who died of. It's interesting because I'm quite drawn to you. Really well, it is my rugged chin. <laughs> yes, mm. it is a quite rugged chin. <laughs> I suppose what he meant before by one person caring is we do have one, uh, a paladin a traveling paladin. with us. Uh, myself, I am open to the views of the world. I'm traveled. It seems strange that a paladin would travel with them, from what you've seen of them. Because paladins usually travel amongst themselves, right? Yeah, they, they usually don't travel with anybody else. I did find it quite odd um, that the paladin was not with other paladins. I, I've met several paladins in my times, but they were usually with other paladins. I found this one alone. It seems like perhaps recently he had lost his companions to things that came from Abaddon and the, the gates. You feel a sharp twinge in your heart thinking about losing your own companions? So, I rather think he actually enjoys the solace. He likes burdens. Better loneliness. He's a paladin. I believe that's what they're accustomed to by birth, right? He's bullheaded, but he swings an axe with a strong hand and has miracles that have helped myself. Just don't bef- profane his god, and I'm sure he won't do anything. I would like to know exactly how he dead. slew that demon. I shall... Enlighten you, if you wish, later on. It was interesting to me because it's always good to see where he's useful. Well, I'm, I'm glad <laughs> that you two are open-minded because I receive power from Dyrath. The power to mend wounds. I can stop the flow of a, of a bleeding wound or mend a bone. I... You have healing magic. That's a rare thing, really, in any case, outside of, you know, Aldronian clerics and paladins. Well then, that's... Can you see curses? Out of game, I think I can, right? You know, you might be able to. I mean, you, you can see other things. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can see this. I'm not quite sure. I... Even if I had seen a curse, I... I don't know if I would know 
that I was seeing a curse. Well, look at me now. It, you mean you've never... He might tease something, but he would not necessarily know what it was. Is that, is that accurate? Indeed. But it would certainly go a ways to prove your theory if there was something there. I don't know how to employ you, ask you to do this. I will try my best. Um, I mean, this is, this is, uh, you've done this before, and um, it's not something that draw, really draws any attention whatsoever. You could very well do it right here. Okay. If you, if you would so choose. Okay, so uh, out of game, I can see, I could see something, right? Perhaps. Okay. Um, you so. will use this dark miracle, you will cast it, okay. and um, I believe, or is, or is this the one that requires no... That's a good question, DM. I've, I've, <laughs> good question, DM. Oh, no, no, uh, no stamina use. Okay. You will roll concentration gotcha. to do this. That's a six, uh, tw- uh, 18. <laughs> 18? 18, Okay, so um, you, you know, turn in your chair fully to, to face Griffin, and um, you really, as long as you, <laughs> you look him in the eyes, <laughs> and Griffin, as you're looking back at him, um, the, the dark gray irises uh, of his eyes um, do sort of flicker and change to be a uh, pale silver, and then that, that fades fades away to nothing and his eyes look normal again. Bernard, um, what you saw was mostly whiteness. Um, there was there was something in there, yes, something that was staining the surface, but it wasn't it wasn't very clearly any sort of evil deed. It it very certainly wasn't um, anything malicious. If anything, it's uh, it's guilt. But you don't see any cause for it in there. It's it's a uh, it's just guilt, and you saw nothing else. Mm-hmm. I had I saw stock white, and I didn't see much, but I had a feeling a feeling of deep guilt. No curse. Not that you saw? Not that I saw, no. Just a unexplained, unexplained. That's fine. <laughs> Are you unsettled by this, Griffin? I'm trying to figure out what it is right now. I mean, it's obviously there. All right. As far as my healing capabilities, would you like a demonstration? And then I start to uncuff, like, like roll up my sleeve. Whoa. <laughs> you need not bleed yourself on this table. There's all, there are already dark stains all over the table. He wouldn't be the first. You can if you wish. I do not wish. But um, I am willing to show. Oh. Take I'd... it on faith. Not faith. But I'll trust Something. you. <laughs> I trust you. Thank you. I will not forget that trust. So, uh, are we do back? Um, I need to finish my. Oh, my, should I? My ale. Sorry. Do you wish me? <laughs> do you wish me to tell him here? For yourself? No, you don't have to do that. But I did. There was a woman named Annika, and she gave me some potions, and then I used them as soon as I got back in your company. You are all in trouble. Well, to that I can only say that it was a very difficult fight. That's fine. I had the five potions because I believed you to be traveling with us. Why well, use one on yourself, Ute, Bram? We're down to two. And Annika is a very strong potion maker, and the alchemist. You wish to return to her? It's already so soon. It takes time. Maybe we can make do with these potions and perhaps your assistance as well. Hey Cole, roll spot, would you? Sure. 
bless you. Uh, 22. Okay, so the, there were two men watching you earlier when you were flapping your arms. Um, not the bearded one, but the other one is uh, still watching you. And is, you, you notice his eyes go over everyone sitting at that table. And his brow is very deeply furrowed. And he looks like a, a sort of rough cut character. Um, he also looks like a drunkard because his eyes are very yellow. Um, his cheeks are uh, bright red with drink, as though he's been here a while. And when he catches you looking at him, uh, he stands up. Without changing my posture or breaking my smile, I kind of like um, whisper over to Griffin, don't look now, but we have a belligerent incoming. Um, you hear a, a, a barmaid um, kind of call out as he pushes her aside and she spills, spills beer all over some patrons. And this man, who when he stands up, is almost Griffin's height, um, oh. is lumbering over to your table pretty drunkenly. Did you get his attention? I uh, know on purpose. <laughs> a flashback. <laughs> Perhaps it's just time to leave. Maybe we could offer to tie his shoes. He's pretty drunk and he's having difficulty making his way to the table. Would you like to try and make a hasty exit? I'm trying to avoid trouble here. We weren't supposed to be here anyway. Okay, let's go then. Oh, with you? We're leaving, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll need you, uh, you may roll all roll reflex. And we shall take the highest of all of your numbers. Is that an 18? Yeah. Okay, so. Okay. 28. What was your number? 28. 28? Ooh, never mind. Uh, so, we the yeah, we got the same natural, natural 20, total of 30. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> awesome. We're just like, on the, the ball. On the ball. <laughs> God, I'm getting the fuck out of here. You were almost to the door um, when a loud voice calls to you, slurringly, stop! And the whole room kind of gets a little quiet. You are, you are at the door. You can go out if you like. I was like, no, and then I'll keep going. <laughs> All right, you, you, you. I agree, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, you step outside quickly, uh, Bernard, um, you're, you're following these two gentlemen outside as this, uh, huge drunken man, um, looks first startled and then enraged by this last comment, and his veins, like, <laughs> stick out on his neck, and he takes two steps forward before you slip out the door and slam the door shut really quickly. Door shut. Is there a trough out here? Yeah, there's a trough out here. I'm gonna push it in front of the door. Roll strength. There's a horse trying to drink from it. Fourteen. You uh, push it away from the horse. Yeah, slap the horse's ass. <laughs> okay. So the horse kind of <laughs> skips out of the way, and you, you push the trough in front of the door. Um, Did it open uh, out? Can Does it open both ways? It opens in. That's fine. That's still, you might still trip. All right. Okay. I'm going to start heading down the street away okay. from the keg court towards the smith. Okay. So you uh, you head quickly away toward the smithy. Um, you may roll listen I'd if like you like. To duck down an alley. Mm -hmm. on the opposite side of the street so we can see the entrance to the Kagan Court. Okay. I guess I'm going to defer to his knowledge of the city. You may, uh... <laughs> you may do that. I don't know where I am. <laughs> so, I'm blind. I also so. do so. <laughs> okay. I just quickly call out on like, down Dang. this way. The soundscape that I usually use suddenly is having problems so we're not going to use it. Imagine people. Imagine people everywhere. Push through the crowd. Okay, you push through the crowd. Um, Try and keep my mohawk down. Duck into an alley, you said? Okay. Yeah, so if we're on the other side of the street, we probably can't see the keg and court because of all the people. Yeah. So but I'll just try and keep a, keep an eye at an ear. An ear? But you, yeah, you can roll listen. Roll listen for it. You may all roll listen if you like. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Fantastic. Um, a total of 21. Eight. <laughs> eight. You can stop it. Uh, just 27. I know exactly what I'm listening for, though. Okay, um... So you, you don't hear... You don't hear 
the crash or, or the water, but you do hear a horse um, kind of whinny and, and scream a little bit, and then um, you went back to the trough. You hear, "Son of a bitch!" and it kind of carries over, <laughs> over the crowd, and everyone kind of looks that way. Do you think he might have stepped in uh, manure? He just wanted to talk to us. Maybe he had a gift for us. Maybe he could have been as nice as this gentleman. He might want to join the band. Where are you going? What are you doing? Can we go back to the magic box now? I feel like now is the time for the magic box. We can go back. I'm choosing to trust you. Well, in his defense, I say as we start to move forward, like, if that man finds us, he is going to beat the shit out of all of us. I feel like that's <laughs> Griffin. What's, what's, what sort of look was that? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm your masculine still... pride is not, dis- <laughs> not so horribly disaffected. Come along now. Still adjusting your jesting. I thought it would happen sooner. You Don't do... take it the wrong way. I do appreciate you uh, mm-hmm. traveling. You're going to the smithy. Base gods. Um, it's gonna be very easy robbing you two. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone <laughs> stops. <laughs> Wait a minute. When does the jest end? And the... <laughs> I apologize. I'm not gonna be robbing you. <laughs> no, no. I, I actually rather enjoyed myself. Okay. To, to the, the smithy. Smith. With haste. Let us go. You make it, you make your way <laughs> quickly to the. To this Hopefully you don't mind being a halfway across the continent in an elven city. Uh, you've never been to an elven city, you've never seen an elf. This was the first half elf you've ever seen at this smithy, but here we go. We're, we're just going to do it. Um, you go back to the smithy. I apologize. <laughs> and, um, door's closed. Shall we knock? You knock. Mintha creaks the door open and then... Let you in. Okay, step inside and then we shouldn't be followed. There was some drunkard that wanted you. Probably. You both was. step in Most and then likely. Bernard Most follows and her eyes kind of lock onto him and she says, looks like you're being followed now. Well, he should be fine. My name is Bernard. It's nice to meet you. So she extends a hand and actually uh, pretty roughly Roughly shakes it, um, and it's at that point that you that you, that you realize that she she's taken off the the coat she was wearing earlier, and her arms are very very heavily muscled. Um, mm-hmm. Probably the most muscular woman you've ever seen. Um, yeah, she she shakes your arm heavily, and, and she says, "Mentha." It's a pleasure. She walks around you and goes back to sitting at her table. There are other chairs for you to sit. Did you want? Wanna- Go back. Oh, certainly. There was a drunkard. I think we lost him. You've upset someone else? Not on purpose. He was coming towards us. We were sitting at a table in the kick and cork. You usually reserve for yourself. Uh, so she puts her face um, in her hand a little bit. The man looked like... Tall. Tall. Yellow About eyes. My height. Yes, he, he seemed to be affected by jaundice. Yes, um... Yes. <laughs> I, I, I know of him. Did it's, he it's, a, it's not a problem. Did he want us away from the table? Because it's Pike's table? Oh, no, he's, he's just an asshole. No. It's fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> in that case, I did nothing. So Mintha kind of gives you a little bit of a look, and she says, you know, for some reason I can't put my finger on, I just don't quite believe that. I do recall some kind of outlandish well, gesture. Might have, might have said something. I believe the exact wording was, no, fuck you. <laughs> the exact wording was, I agree, fuck you. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> He said no. Have, have you been drinking? She, she looks at all of you. <laughs> Not so much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so truthful and forthcoming. <laughs> yes. It was just the one glass. Truthfully, I, I should have gotten more for it. 
uh, tell the barkeep I've paid for your drinks for the next round, but I'm sure you've already paid for yours anyway. I shall tell him nothing until I have my money. Leo, you... I don't know any money, money. I have no money. Different situation than what we're speaking of? Yes. Fine. Very well. Do we... Do you owe her something? No, it's not me. It's the barkeep. It's the barkeep. Ah. Either way. I suppose we will be back off again. We weren't supposed to... It's nice to make your acquaintance, Bernard. Look at that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Griffin, uh, <laughs> Griffin points to the table where I can't. where this uh, little silver jewelry box is sitting. It's a pretty thing, mm-hmm. um, and it is uh, looks like it's meant to you know be an aristocrat be in an aristocratic ladies' room. Mm-hmm. In fact, I believe that Sophie had one a lot like it um, that you kind of vaguely remember as you look at it. Um, it looks as though it, there is a, a painting um, painted into the lid of it, but then you see something in the painting move um, as someone, like someone walking across the painting, and you're not entirely sure what this is. It, look, it looks like there's a man in sorcerer's robes moving about in this painting. I think this is a rather obvious question, but I prefer to think of it as the world's largest boot. You see, can, is it done? I'm just gonna walk over to it. <laughs> Griffin walks up to it. And I'm gonna call through and say, uh, make way, Joffrey. Uh, so Joffrey looks up from where he's pacing around the room and kind of shrugs, because he's just far back it's away from it. I'll wave off like, yeah. Uh, I'll take it off the table, put it on the ground, crawl through it. Okay. No hesitation. Okay, so, Bernard, this is what you see. Um, Griffin lowers himself to the floor, and then he reaches forward, and as he does, his fingertips touch the painting, the moving painting, and then they distort and become very, very small. And the further he feeds his body through this, um, every bit of his body that goes through it begins to distort, until he himself is so small that he has gone through it and he is on the other side. Completely. Dragons and magical paintings. Now, you have to keep in mind whenever you're using this to transport yourself, you must be conscious of all of your body parts at the same time. If you forget to think about your left finger, for instance, you might not arrive on the other side with it attached. Roll sense motive, Bernard. Sweet. Um, painting, sense motive, uh, 24. The left side of Cole's mouth is doing a small quirk as though he's trying to keep himself from smiling and you can tell that he is messing with you again. Oh, I see. Oh. Well, it might be true. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, I'll pick up the drawer box off the ground on my side. Oh, the painting moves. Flip it on the ground. I'll say, <clears throat> Cole, step on through. Right away. I'll make this more comfortable this time. I feel like I have to sneeze. So yeah, like I put it on like I'm putting on a sock. <laughs> and then I just like step like one leg at a time. Oh god. <laughs> that must look so strange. I'm trying to think of how your body would distort to do that. You get some animators in here to do Cole's, that. <laughs> Cole's boots come through and then the rest of him comes through. And um, yeah, you essentially pull it up and over him. You can do the same if you wish. Ber- Bernard. 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 And uh, I do exactly what I mimic what Griffin did. I enter exactly as he did. Oh, you crawl through? Okay. <laughs> Alright, so um, you see Bernard's <laughs> gloved hand start to come through and you realize oh, what sh- he's doing. Shut Bernard. <laughs> <And> you, you, <laughs> you, put it, you put it very quickly on the ground so that he can crawl out. Um, you reach through and as, uh, as you're touching, as you touch the, uh, the painting, it feels as though you're reaching into water. But it's not, it's not a continual feeling, like once your hand's on the other side, it's only the part that divides that side from this side. So it's like the tiniest little sliver of, of water passes over you. Goosebumps. Yep, and it, and it kind of, sh- you, you don't feel your body shrink, you don't really feel anything change, but if you look back over your shoulder, there's a weird distortion to your form. Mm. So you, uh, you reach through, 
and your gloved hand presses not onto a hard wooden floor, but instead onto a plush, luxurious carpet. And the humidity is gone. Scoop up the door box. You have my thanks, Mitha. So she, she nods from the other side, and then she says, Should I keep it open? Is there anybody else that might follow us, Bernard? Not that I know. Besides the asshole. I think not. What, what, what of Bram? He's on this side. <laughs> Hold on a second. At that point, you hear a punctuated snore from one of the back rooms. Where you are, by the way, mm-hmm. you are We've in. Um, <laughs> you are in uh, this luxurious common sitting room. Uh, there I are. Say that I am the jitter. There are, um, you know, plush couches mm-hmm. and um, cushions, and there are beautiful tapestries uh, on the walls. The walls and the floor and the ceiling all seem to be made of this kind of shimmery. A white stone. It's not mm-hmm. anything that you've ever seen before. It's very beautiful. But within this common room, there are several doors. One big main door that kind of obviously leads off to somewhere different than the five smaller doors. Um, and that snore came from toward one of the smaller doors. There's another person in this room, other than the two you just came through with. Um, it is a kind of a a youngish guy, younger than you, um, with black hair, kind of gaunt features. He he almost, you almost might uh, be related to him, that you look so similar, except that his eyes, um, they're they're very large and he has dark circles beneath them, which is never something that, you know, you yourself have had. Mm -hmm. And his, his irises are a bright, bright amber color and they are luminescent in that mm. there's actually a slight glow um, around his around his cheekbones and, and oh, things. Wow. And this is something I've never seen before, right? This is not anything that you've ever seen before. Mm. Um, he's dressed in these voluminous dark robes. Um, and oh God, how, how old does he look? He's like he looks as though he's 19, I believe, is no older than that. And his hair is kind of greasy, okay. and and he's he's very very short, I believe five five, at the tallest, and he does not look like a warrior. He looks like a scholar. He looks very out of place okay. next to Cole and next to Griffin. Joffrey, sorcerer of a college at Crescent Keep, Bernard. Hi, I, I I'm I'm Bernard. I'm a, I'm a shepherd of Dyrus. Oh, um, Joffrey steps forward and he takes your hand and he takes it in a very effeminate way and kind of okay. does this little shake as though he's not accustomed to uh, to doing that sort of thing. And then he with, withdraws his hand and um, they kind of disappear into his his sleeves. And he says, uh, you, you're a, a shepherd. Indeed, a shepherd of Dyrus. Oh, I apologize. It- it's not something that that doesn't offend you, does it? Oh no, no, it's it's quite all right. I I, I know what what you are and what it is that you do. I, I'm simply surprised. <laughs> Paladin of Aldronus, point to the door. Sleeping off his exertion. Indeed. Cole, as he will. <laughs> is now the time then? I seek not to out you myself. You do. The outing for yourself. Well, now that we're in private company, I feel I should warn you. I'm a warlock. A warlock? Yes. So, your soul is bound to a demon? Yes. Is it something that you entered willfully? Joffrey moves back and away from this situation and goes to sit on a couch off to the side. Um, I guess I go to pull, to pull a chair as mm-hmm. like, and I like gesture to like cushion. I fall A cushion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, the original contract was 
Well, it was of my own will, but it was on pain of death. I... I had a choice. I could have expired. I chose not to. But that was only the entry fee. I had to renegotiate for a better settlement. Shepard and Dyrith, does that mean you can... You said you can heal. I'm still the only person who can't cast. Oh, I... I wouldn't think too poorly of it. Griffin, you... Well, I'm sure you could crush a skull twice as fast as even the most martial of the casters in the group. You're damn right I can. <laughs> but perhaps I should get that ring back from Bram. Then I can make myself useful again in some other way. Forgive me my interruption. You were talking about your second damned contract? Yes. The first time I nearly managed to bargain for my life. It was not until after I had discovered the particulars of the contract that I had entered, namely that I had in fact entered into a contract and that it was not some twisted fever dream that I had conjured up in my half day's stupor following that particular fight. I'm sorry, but what is it exactly that you do with these powers given to you? I was not there in the fight. I suppose it is suitable to give a non embellished version of the events of that particular day. You embellished the events before. Well, when I say what happened unequivocally exactly? that it was Bram who slain the demon it was not strictly speaking true, but also not quite false either. He was the one who exerted himself the most in the city's defense and in the defense of the people. But the demon was not bound to this world. He could not harm it in the most traditional sense, not even with his specialized weaponry or even with his vaunted paragon magic, whatever you want, want to call that. I think they call them miracles. Indeed. I shall use the term then. I knew, uh, based on my own experience, that we needed to find some way to... Joffrey interjects and says, they're not spells. Miracles. He goes back to looking off. I kind of like smirk in his direction and continue. Um, I said, we needed to find some way to bind the demon to this plane, and so to that effect, I harried the smithy for some iron filings, and that did the trick. So you're bound to a demon, and does the demon give you the knowledge on how to slay demons? That seems... It is... Odd. Not exactly so, but... Your master has imparted some knowledge to you, but much of it you did have to learn on your own. You have to understand. My particular lord... He's not all-powerful. He has concerns, rivalries. His own motivations. He's taught me as much as he thinks that I, as an operative, should know, and has also given me access to call down a bit of his power. But I should make no mistake in saying that I, myself, not gifted with any magical talent as a sorcerer here, or even perhaps a practitioner of whatever faith you preach or practice, I'm more of a conduit. That's... That's a great sacrifice. I hope you were listening, Joffrey. Tell me the important bits later. You... Uh, I'm sorry, but... You <laughs> what, what? Essentially, I, all that I did was throw some, <laughs> throw some iron at him, and then when his back was turned, I, I shot him with lightning. That I understand. I shot him with lightning because my demon lord is pleased by it. With lightning. My demon lord is pleased with displays of martial prowess in his name. And sex and violence and depraved things and all the other wonderful entrapments that demons enjoy. Demons enjoy violence and sex, then? They claim to. They know that humans enjoy it. 
I've seen that humans don't enjoy quite as much as others. I'll point at that door. <laughs> Some, ne never mind. I don't want to, I don't wish to get into that. Yeah, I wouldn't say that he does not enjoy violence. Are you still referring to your paladin friend? I do not. I do not believe he would be so charitable as to call me a friend. Perhaps Griffin. I do not know their relationship and its specifics. He might call me a friend. He has called you a friend in the past, at a game. He's called me a friend before, but he doesn't quite treat the things and I say and the warnings I give him with the importance they deserve. I was taught by many brothers People who had their own opinions. I lived in a space of argumentative disagreements, opinions that clashed with one another. Some believed sorcerers, warlocks, that there was nothing objectively wrong with it. I tend to believe that as long as the person is true to themselves, and as long as they do not harm others, and I have no problems with the fact that you're a warlock. I choose to consider that you said do not harm others. Those I... who do not invite harm upon themselves. Even I understand that violence is not always avoidable. But there is no need for pillaging or the taking of what is not yours. I agree with the sentiment. But there are many who... Many of my brothers would not be sitting here and having a conversation with you. Well, then we're lucky that you are one of whoever you are. I should consider that... I don't believe that we all have the same faith, if we do in fact have a faith at all. But there are some grand auspices that brought together a paladin, a warlock, a shepherd of Dyreth, a sorcerer, and a renowned plainsman warrior together. I believe so too. I agree. We've unified for what, under some kind of influence, uh, underneath what we believe to be an important cause. Survival. Yes. I just... I hope that the most righteous of us can learn to be so iniquitous. <laughs> Is he will see what I am talking about when he wakes. He will most likely be asleep for a long while, though. If there's anything else you wish to do, we can stay here and come... I'm no stranger to conflict, but is that going to be an issue? Is my oh, presence going to be a problem? Only if he makes it one. I honestly cannot tell you with any degree of certainty. The fact that I cannot predict whether or not it will be a problem is in itself a problem. <laughs> but it is actually moving on towards the evening time, and I have not had any odd. They don't have meat here. Do the, do the elves not eat meat? Well, the last one I was here, 17 years ago, they did not. Perhaps the the influx of trade has introduced them to... Do they all eat grass like the rabbits? How was a man to survive? Look at Vesper. He, he has the arms of a blacksmith, and surely he's had food that... It's just the meat doesn't... He must hoard. He must know someone who knows someone. We could... We should go seek Vesper because uh, the decision is yours. We there must be some sort of black market for these types of things. Should we try this and This is have, a market town, after all. Should we try and have a meal with the Emperor? Would that please you? Or should we go speak with the smith and have a casual... Ah, yes, there are the niceties of court life to consider. You shall do what is most important for the cause. I will deplore the lack of meat. There is no great need in this time besides a meal. 
Well, whatever you decide to do, little game. I have to use the bathroom, so we're gonna break before we do that. Where is the privy here, elf? <laughs> the privy. Okay, we're taking a break for just a second. Um, you can talk with you can talk with the players for just a just a couple of minutes. But we can't talk back. But <coughs> you you can tell the players things, but they can't really talk back unless you guys are really quick to open up chat on your phones. Your player, your back banter, maybe not say a word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at your tweets here, Karen. That's my, I'm actually going to go use the bathroom. <laughs> Break. I'm going to take a quick, um, <laughs> this water here. <laughs> you tweeted at Andrew WK to try and, because we're partying so hard in D&D. &D. Was it the drinks? I could use a drink right now. You could use a drink? Yeah. I, like I think we might actually have some dry mead. Sweet. <laughs> or some wine. <laughs> We've actually done that before. Uh, when Alistair died, we poured a drink for him. Oh man! Not to bring anybody down, but that's something we did. That sounds. That sounds. That sounds nice. I'm hoping I don't die. Now that we've got a shepherd of Dyrith. If you do die, would you prefer that I pour out a forty? Uh, probably the meat. Some old English. Probably the meat okay. will be fine for me. Okay. I will go to. Um, I think I sell meat at like most. Most shops, at least in, at least in Austin. I have to wait until the stupid advertisement is done. Although it's not stupid, it's Legion. <laughs> Shh, we don't talk about that dark time. <laughs> okay, so I have the chat open now so we can actually reply. Uh, what is that? I. Sexy. Want my shirt. Be sexy for is that Warcraft? Well, yeah, that was a Warcraft. Legion Sweet. advertisement. I like the chat only. There we go. I'm gonna test real quick to see if the bots back up. Maybe not, but oh, there it is. That means Grayson stopped by earlier. Thank you so much, Grayson. If you're still here, thank you so much. Yeah, I saw that he he saw what was going on. That's fantastic. <laughs> Some back of <laughs> uh, how's everybody uh, enjoying? Are you having fun so far? Yes. You, this is fun. Digging this. Sorry it took so long to get to you, but there's important, crazy shit. I don't know what you're no, talking I'm actually going to fix this. Look at everybody checking I'm all, their I'm all, I'm all down for listening. Oh, this. Exclamation point EXP. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you get in the chat room later with a thing, you can start earning experience. But you have to follow the channel, or else you don't earn experience. I do, I do, I do follow the channel. So... <laughs> Were you like no progress or something? Yes. <laughs> <You're> no progress. <gasps> that's that's awesome. I I'm sorry. I I know everyone because I because I, I didn't see it, but Jake was uh, Taylor was like, hey, they got mad at you, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> oh, you're the one that oh. said Jake is. I'm your dad. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I always I no, go no, no, I, no, no, I, no. I go to Jake's room. And I go, Jake, Jake, I'm your dad. I just that, so. No, it's fine. Just we get some people. In I remember. That are I saw sometimes. that. I was like, that's so creepy. Stop yeah. doing that. <laughs> I, I, I like going to Jake's hey, room. I go into Jake's room and like write notes for, to him, and I say like, "Hey, dude, have a good day." And, I, and, I say, and then I say like, "Your dad." Your dad. Aww. I, 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 think, okay. I think it gives him a. Now it's not so weird. Yeah, earlier. But you guys can't do it. It'll stream, be weird. Uh, K Bird, your first live stream. Hope you're enjoying it. It's, it's this is a great stream. Yeah. Thanks for all. The, thanks for all the follows. Thanks for the follows, everybody. Yeah, I think Jacob was the only one that knew it was me. <laughs> but yeah, he, he didn't he, say anything. He like a true a true gentleman didn't say a word. Yeah, we're gonna. Um, <clears throat> We'll probably we'll get back into it in post stream. Okay, so back in game. Lo lo love you, chat. Miss you, boo boo. We'll talk to you in a second. Um, back back in game. You're still in Moonwatch. You're still in that common room, and you're. I think it's been a long time. When is the last time I ate? It's been a while since you ate. Did I even have lunch? No, I don't think so. I don't think you did that. I think the demon thing distracted everybody from uh, the Yeah, I think you've been, uh... Is my tummy a gremlin? Let's see. You, you're talking about food? Yeah, it probably does. I'm a plainsman. Your plainsman tummy? <laughs> Growling. I suppose a nice, large salad will surely satiate that hunger. All of the... I'll put up with it if I have to, but, but don't <laughs> expand on it. Well, but I mean, you it, want, you've got to understand food. that it's still fine food. 
Meat is not not something you got to eat all the time, unless you're a plainsman. <laughs> <laughs> Which you ate a lot of meat. Um, but we can continue the conversation just around food. Anything. So you want to talk about food, or you want to eat the food? And we go. <laughs> Where are we going? To a communal hall. Uh, not. I'm not going to assume I could get a meal with the Emperor, but I might be able to, if you wish. It's up to your interest. Would you like to have a meal with the Emperor of Moonwatch, a lost land of Feth, or would you like to have a meal with Vesper the Smith, who is no less important? In my eyes. If I could make a suggestion, be so bold. I don't know if I'm ready to dine with an Emperor. <laughs> just keep to yourself. Okay. Just, just don't, uh, don't look him in the eye and... No. Ah. <laughs> this... We'll, we'll go... We'll see if the smith is ready to call on into his day. He's a very kind person. Very well. Okay. So you're, uh... This is a decision you've made for yourself, Bernard, and I hope you are ready. <laughs> I... Yes. <laughs> Give me just one second. <laughs> Joffrey? Joffrey, um... Joffrey's standing Will you up. Will be staying here with... He, he he looks at the door, and you can see the decision made in his eyes immediately, nope. and he shakes his head. <laughs> Perhaps whenever he awakens, he'll be less surly. But he'll be very hungry. Should I wake him? For food? I don't see why not. Hmm... No. Let's Cole, let I think Cole and uh, Joffrey are wearing similar expressions. <laughs> you can eat when he awakens. I am sure that the delay of a few hours at most will not kill him. I stand up. And... I'll head out into the hallway. And right. wait for everybody else. Come on, dude. Okay. So Joffrey follows, and I think Bernard and Cole follow too. For the sake of time not taking too long, I'm mm -hmm. just going to head all the way down the, the path, the main thoroughfare, down because we're kind of like on a mountain, right? So it's like really steep or kind pretty, of steep. Slide pretty, down the banister. Pretty pretty <laughs> steep and there are no banisters. <laughs> no, no we'll, we'll go outside the palace, mm -hmm. uh, go all the way down towards the bottom. Bernard, you step out of <clears> the out of the, the lavish room you're in and step into a no less lavish hallway um, with tall, tall vaulted ceilings and everything's made of that beautiful white stone. You follow Griffin and Cole and Joffrey kinda kinda hangs back and doesn't walk directly beside you but you can tell he's sort of um, admiring the architecture the same way that you are. Mm -hmm. And then you step out and into the open and you're standing um, now in front of this beautiful, luxurious palace, and again, everything's made of that white stone. It's built very clearly as you feel the, the wind kind of pick your hair up and, and toss it a little bit, that you're, uh, this whole thing is built on a, on a mountain, essentially. I mean, you, uh, you can see, you can see a lot of stuff from, from your vantage point, much more than I think you've ever seen in your life. Um, and the entire city is built this way, and there is a long, long, long case of white steps that leads all the way down to what looks like a gate at the bottom of the bottom of the city. But it's a very, very long way down. So as we are walking, I like sidle up to um, the Griffin and I kind of like whisper him and like not too soft the tone like i don't really care if you hear but um just for the benefit of not spreading the conversation into the public sphere mm -hmm. um it's okay they're all speaking elvish anyway so it's remarkable that that magic box managed to transport no less than five people into a heavily defended mountaintop fortress i think that's why we agreed to not really speak about it openly, which you are not. I kind of only simply again remarking on 
tactical uses of such a such a device. Some elves pass by and they bow deeply to all of you and they say Ashnua and then they continue I, on their I way. I do a copy of what he does. I just kind of like look and then... <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick bow. Um, Joffrey is too busy looking around at everything to respond. If we should find ourselves in need of infiltrating some other type of keep in the future, it is a strategy worth noting. I do not know if this will happen, but... I generally leave the jewelry box in some place. By the way, um, I'm trying to keep it down, but I'm not feeling like... Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, both of you, if you need to say anything softly or whisper, lean in, lean in close. Generally, I leave the jewelry box somewhere that I might... It is how we access the keep. It's how we access those that might aid us. It has a lot of value, personally, to myself. I would but, not assume to make use of anything without the permission of its owner. And far be it for me to suggest that you change your general strategy with regards to things in your possession. I'm open to suggestions, should the need arise. Very well. Joffrey? Joffrey is not paying attention to you. Joffrey. If you stop on the steps, he will almost yeah, walk I'll into you. Okay. Um, Do you want to meet some dragons? So he, he stops abruptly. What? When last I was here 17 years ago, I dropped off the six white dragon eggs I stole here, and then they were hatched and raised outside with the frost witches that live outside the city. They might still be there. Ah. Do you want to meet some dragons? If they're still here? Yes. If not that, witches. All right. After a meal, if we make haste. Yes. Well, let's eat first. I, th I think that would be best. <laughs> <coughs> there shouldn't be any combat or anything. I've gone to the, the settlement multiple times myself with no danger. Well, there's always danger, but with no aggression. No, just... I'm, I am I very much want to do this. A meal first. Jo Joffrey's face kind of tightens up, but he, he follows without another word. Uh, I'll head to the blacksmith real quick. You head to the blacksmith? Pretty near one of the communal halls, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Vesper's not there. Okay. I just take a glance by it, and since he's not apparently there, I just... I'm obviously looking at the blacksmith, and then I turn away from it, and I hey, keep going on. Okay. Communal eating hall. You head to the communal, closest communal hall. It is an open affair, and the weather is so nice here that you can't see a reason why it would be built any other way. Um, the smell of food wafts out to you before you really get anywhere close to it. And again, it's built of that same white stone. Um, there are loud voices, laughter, a little bit of music playing uh, from this hall, and you can see between the pillars this long, long table. And then there are more and more and more back through the uh, through the building, and every inch of it is laden with food. I just pick an area along the bench that has enough to sit all of us, or on the other side, either way. Sure. Um, start putting food on my plate. Um, just so grab uh, it. yeah, you roll spot as you do this. Twenty-seven. The elves. At, at your table are all watching you. Most of them are still going about their conversations, but they are, you know, casting you looks to all of you. Is, is this allowed? Is this fine? I've done this before, and then I'll bow to them and look at them. They turn back to what they're doing, but you do get a glance every now and then. Joffrey. <laughs> Joffrey is looking up and down the tables. Perhaps there's some uh, custom that we aren't meeting, maybe a praise of the elven gods. Maybe we should just make them feel so uncomfortable as so they'll turn away. That seems like a terrible idea. Joffrey says, we're the only humans here. 
and when you look at the tables, again, they are all elves. There are still humans and other people milling about outside, you know, selling their wares, that sort of thing. Perhaps they even, you know, maybe even live here, you don't know, but everyone in this building is an elf. I believe we're breaking a social moray. I guess, I suppose I did come here last time with Vesper. Um, so... I'm gonna go to eating. <laughs> you sit down to eat. Okay. You sit down to eat. Joffrey kind of slides into, uh, on, onto the bench and step takes up. a little bit of food. You can step outside if you're uncomfortable. I'm going to finish my meal. There's no meat on the table. It's still something. There is a thick stew that kind of smells like meat. I try it. It's not meat. It's not. But it has, it has a good taste. It's good food. That's good food. I slurp it. <laughs> Do you slurp it loudly? Yes. <laughs> I take um, a spoonful. It's very quiet. <laughs> I like I like put it down and I say, yes, I, I do expect that eventually someone's going to come to accost us, so I don't think that our manners matter over much in the end. Or I think they do. They probably won't accost us if we... If they accost us, I blame you. So Again. the, uh, the <laughs> soup or broth or whatever it is that, that you're slurping, um, the bowl, the big serving bowl, is just about empty. Um, an elf kind of sidles up next to you, not intentionally to get close to you, Cole, but to lean past you so that he can take that empty bowl, set it aside, and replace it with a steaming hot bowl of the same thing. You note that there is just about... There are no empty plates or platters or bowls on this table. Everything is refilled immediately. Thank you. He takes the bowl when he leaves pretty quickly. You see? Bigotry is an ingrained cultural practice. Of... I've never had a problem here. It's something about you. Maybe they can all tell that... You're from where -ish? Yes. Are you typically accosted by strangers? <laughs> I imagine it's going to happen much more often now. Is there anything else that you would like to do? I just want to finish this meal. <laughs> I, uh, Burger puts the spoon down and kind of just <laughs> leans back on the table. No, no, you're fine. You're from the right country. All right, so... I don't think Ashland and Feth Elves have anything against... They do trade with Burden. But can we just be away from here? Are you done with your meal? I like... Okay, yeah, let's go. Before you go to do the thing that you told Joffrey about, was there anything else you wanted to do? I don't know. You don't know? Is it? I don't know. I'm mostly just killing time because Bram is sleeping. Bram is sleeping. If there's nothing else that you wanted to do, we'll have to cut it. Mm. I, cannot, I cannot allow you. To, to, go, to, to go, go do to that thing far. quite yet. Because, Let me think then. Because we, Jake is not here. Let me think about something that'll take 30 minutes. That's not that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we could try to convince the fine elvish people here to not accost us. Mm. Well, we, no. can, we can do that just by leaving this establishment. <laughs> so I step outside. <laughs> you step outside, Joffrey follows. And then I bow to anybody that looks at us and like a really like couple bows. Yeah, if if you get, I mean, if you go outside, people who are coming in to to the hall, uh, a couple of them, you know, smile at you and they they rattle off some Elvish that you don't understand, and then they end it with hush nuan, and, and they bow really deeply, and they just walk past you. We can find the smith. Yes. Although I. I'm familiar with his look. I do need to know exactly what type of armor he is planned to... I didn't tell him anything, did I? He just assumed. He seemed like one of those types of old friend type guy, men who would just <laughs> provide you with the exact thing you conceptualized in your head. You know, 
those types of, of friends. He has been very kind to provide any type of armor or weapon I've... He made this. Like a gauntlet, or...? So the, the gauntlet. Griffin, would you like to describe the gauntlet as it appears on your hand? As I remember, it's a half gauntlet, so it's only on the top. Mm-hmm, only on the top. And it kind of goes over the tip just a little bit, so it's got like a... It ends in sharp points, and it is multi-jointed so that you can flex your fingers. I, I, I remark on it, kind of almost grab, go for your hand, but no better. And I'd say, well, he, he seems to care about his work. He cares about his Art- work? Artisan, maybe. It is, it's probably the most beautiful piece of, of armor that any of you have ever seen. I've learned new things recently that put more importance on this gift than ever before. It was always an important gift, but I learned recently that when sorcerers... This is enchanted. It does great bouts of fire sometimes. I can never tell when it's going to happen, though. So, you, you, hear, you hear Joffrey say something softly from behind you, but you couldn't make out what it was unless you roll high enough. 26? 26. 26. You hear him mutter, Oh, so that's it. Sorry, what was that, Joffrey? Uh, the, the, the gauntlet. It's, it's <clears throat> what's... And he kind of rubs his nose a little bit. What, does it smell like shit or something? No, it... it he, he flexes his fingers and, and looks kind of at a, at a loss for words. It's, it's been bothering me. How so? The, the, the magic. Is it a central fact that it's foreign to you? No, I, I, I study primitive magic. I, I'm, I'm, I was the assistant professor of primitive magic studies at Crescent Keeps uh, Arcane University for the longest time. As like, I've uh, written as many happens, books I like, I like on to you and I like kind primitive of... magic. And so I fully understand what it is that it does, but it, it does a... Uh, it affects the senses uh, of, of sorcerers uh, at times, especially Volatile magic. And what kinds of, of volatile magic um, are most detectable uh, to, to sorcerers in the field? Well, any sort of magic that is uh, uh, n- not quite in- enchanted neatly with, within an object, um, it, it bubbles to the surface and, and it, causes, it causes almost tingling feelings along the skin. And, and when that happens, uh, the, the reason that happens is that the enchanter is not necessarily uh, skilled at, at, at his work, or you know, perhaps uh, perhaps some, something went wrong with, with the enchanting process, perhaps the, the enchanter was distracted, that, that often does happen. Not, not to say that y- your friend who made this thing for you is not skilled, or that he's distracted in his work, but it is something that happens, well, like and it is something to, to be aware of. To move out and of so the frame. <laughs> so it's like moving out. Uh, he'll go on as long as you let him. You said primitive magic. I'll just try and cut him off. Like, Joffrey. <laughs> well, it, it's not necessarily primitive. Who labels it that? Well, the scholars do. Is that something that could be insulting to someone who uses it? Who... Elves magic, it's, it's different. It's... The, the, their magic comes from the... the uh, you must understand. Magic of the land. No, not not all of it. Some some does. Their um, mages don't live in big stone buildings made by civilized folk. Well, yes, they do. And he turns around and gestures at the city. <laughs> he, t- he turns he turns back to you and and he says, "They are sorcerers. That that's that that is sorcery." And, and he gestures to your gauntlet. It's not primitive magic. It's it's not technically so. It's simply what we've labeled it uh, at, at the college. Um, that magic it is absolutely secular. It, it was born from uh, some sort of deity and, and stored within a mortal being and became secular. But that energy likely did not come from Altronus. Um, it, it likely came from one of the Elvish gods. And as far as I know, the, the elves have never had problems with this sort of thing. Uh, pro- problems with, with uh, those who, who worship the, you know, the divinities and, and those who cast secular magic. Re- regardless of all of this, that is 
quite unstable. Which is perhaps why you never know when a fireball will burst out of it. What do you feel when a flame comes forth from this garment? It would probably get quite hot. Well, I'm sure he doesn't feel anything because he's not a caster. Thank you for pointing that out once again. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> More often than not, uh, I'm in the middle of uh, a blood rage. When... It's only ever happened when I'm crushing skulls with maces. That is when the fire bursts, scorches the skin of my target. So you feel it is uh. tied to some sort of emotional release? Or perhaps the stress of combat. Well, that—that that is the worst sort of casting, isn't it? That is a very dangerous object that that, that you have. Uh... Maybe we should go talk to the smith either way. I'd like to know what exactly he gave me. Maybe this is not a gift. But I mm. haven't had any problems ever. I always enjoy hidden surprises and things that you receive from people. You said that you were using it... it that, it, that it activates, that the magic within it activates whenever you lose control of yourself. When you are angry, essentially. I believe the last time it was activated, I was crushing the skull of a, a beast-cursed man 17 years ago. And you were angry? I'd say fairly angry. The, that is a, a dangerous, a dangerous object you have. You must get rid of it. But I like it. But it is dangerous. We are all quite dangerous. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I... God damn it, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> I... Okay. I don't want to even suggest that you get rid of such a treasured belonging, but he is right. Let's talk to the smith. Vesper is a trusted friend. He has been for a long time. Let's learn more. I agree. I don't want to put anybody in danger, especially myself. In my hand, can't swing maces without it. Joffrey seems to concede to that. Where are you headed now? Mason hand. Uh, I'm going to head and try and find Vesper. I'm going to go back to the smith. It's the only place I know. Okay. So, you see lamplight. It is getting pretty dark now. You see lamplight at the smithy, and you can see a shadow moving around. Okay. It's um, about Vesper's height. Is it up on a second story, you said? Or... No. It's like inside? Yeah, it's below. inside. Uh, there was a... What are the windows like? The windows? No, yeah, there's a door, right? Inside, like underneath? The, fi the figure is outside. Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I guess maybe it. I said like the shape or something made it sound like he was inside. I I'll apologize. Approach that area. You approach, you see Vesper moving around, cleaning up essentially. I just approach him quickly and just try and get in his bubble. Okay, how close are you getting to him and how quickly? Not, not any quicker than normal. I just oh, want to okay. initiate conversation. Okay, so, I mean... <laughs> I swarm. <laughs> yeah, I swarm. <laughs> his, his sharp ears are going to pick up your footsteps anyway. Um, he turns when you're still outside of the overhang. And he sees you. He lifts his chin. Do you have time? He gestures to the empty smithy. Uh, you've already met Cole. Good evening. Bernard. My name's Bernard. So he, he steps forward and holds the hand out and with the same grip as Mintha, the same, you know, ferocity of a handshake, um, he, uh, he nods and, and he says, uh, Vesper. Do all smiths have such firm grips? Oh, well, they should. I believe the elves take me the measure of a man by seeing how easy it is to rip their arm out of their socket. That is true. I mean, and he points to Cole. Now come. He gestures underneath the, the overhang. There are little stools for you to sit. You do have to move some like leather strips and a couple tools off of some places, but there's there's enough seating. I had some questions for you, and then just uh, join your company after such a long absence. 
truth be told. Well, I should think the only one who would truly want to enjoy my company is not here. Oh? <laughs> You're referring to... Bram? That was his name, yes. He... He seems to have a way about himself. Mm. I'm sure he wasn't actually meaning that, but he might have been. <laughs> he, he, he waves a hand and he says... Bram uh, made quite the stunning proposition to him in the, uh, earlier in the day. No, no, no more. We'll, what can you do with these? We will, uh, <laughs> we, we shall forget that it ever happened. I shall not. <laughs> First I do of hope Bram is as interesting <laughs> as his reputation Indeed. makes him out to be. Indeed. First of all, should we have not sat in the communal hall that you and I once had food in, I went and ate there again. Should I not have? They all looked at us so weird. He shakes his head a little and he says, well, I don't see what have been wrong would have been wrong with it, but perhaps you should have an escort. You escorted, you escorted me last time. I did. I, I thought nothing of it, but... I won't go again without you. And then there's this. He, he brightens up. First. I What's wrong with it? I thought nothing. So there is something wrong with it? I have no idea. First, I wanted to thank you. Because I learned recently that... When someone crafts something of great power, they put a portion of themselves into it. Permanently. You did this. Yes. Thank What's you. wrong with it? Without putting too fine a point on it, uh, sorcerer friend, I say, pointing suspiciously towards uh, Joffrey. <laughs> Joffrey is kind of... he's not seated. There, there was a, a bunch of stuff on the stool and it looked kind of heavy and so he didn't pick it up and cool. so he's standing over there. Go ahead. He believes that your magic, at least as it exists within the gauntlets, is unstable. This returns and casts him a look, and Joffrey kind of looks out the uh, looks out the overhang at the city as though he hasn't heard. Vesper turns back to the both of the three of you. I did also learn recently that some magic is volatile in certain items. There was a ring I had, uh, it spouted flames, not quite unlike the gauntlet. Well, it's I, not in my possession anymore. I must tell you. And he scoots forward on his, uh, on his stool. He says, I apologize if it's given you any trouble, but I'm not the best enchanter. My skill set is reserved mainly for smithing. I simply thought I, I might put a, a little bit of a gift in, in that. I didn't think it would cause any trouble. It hasn't caused any trouble, has it? Not so far. So far it's only incinerated my enemies. So there's nothing wrong with it, and he, and he sits back. When he was really, really angry is what he said to us. The sorcerer says that it's unstable, and what does that mean, Joffrey? Does that mean... He just might blow apart on my hand. It might. It might. Um, Vesper has turned back to look at him and Joffrey goes back to looking outside. No, no, Joffrey, I must insist that you join us. I, like, make conspicuous effort to, like, clear space next to myself for him to sit. He looks really pained and uncomfortable, but... He comes over and he sits next to you. Am I to trust none of the magical items I have on me? Anymore. Well, These things are fun. I don't know, I'd rather like the box. That doesn't seem too untrustworthy. That seems... Hmm. Well, I shouldn't really know anything else about the other objects you have, but... Here. This Here. has caused no trouble for you. Yes. So why, why worry about it? I could lose my hand, Vesper. Have you yet? How many times have you used it? How long have you had it? I don't use it on purpose. When I do use it, it's... 18 uh, years? control... And no problems yet? I've had it for 18 years. <laughs> but you know... I and it could have done anything in that time, and it I hasn't. was only awake for one of those years. Joffrey chimes in and he says, 
If it has been that long that you've had it and nothing bad has happened yet, then perhaps it's not so unstable as it I seems. I heard that other things get more unstable as time goes by. That is true. It does happen sometimes. So what you're saying is that you have nothing to worry about and, unless you do. Joffrey, you said that there are some materials that are not unstable when certain magics are put inside of them. There are there are some enchantments that that do uh, be better fit the material I there. I like fire. What material is good for fire? Uh, something... Uh, let, let, let's see. Um, the lining of a dragon's throat? Yeah, yeah yes, perhaps. Um, something that, that uh, is good good for enchanting, uh, holding the, those, those fire enchantments. Um, uh, topaz is, is, is one of them. Uh, the stone must be must be yellow, though it, it must be yellow. And uh, rubies, rubies often often hold those enchantments well. And of course, they have to be a certain size to, to hold such an enchantment. And you, you know, you can't carry a tiny tiny thing around and expect it to hold. You must have the most ostentatious spell. ruby encrusted gauntlet possible. I like that. That reminds me, Vesper. How are excavations or of uh, the Dwarven Ruins? Have you heard anything? What's a Dwarven? I believe uh, Ash... Ash Elisin. How, how is Ash Elisin? Are you still getting materials from that place? No. Thing, things have changed. Uh, concerning Osh Ellison. This is not something I'd, I'd like to speak of now, if, if you if you don't mind. His, eye, his eyes tick over. Oh, forgive me, I... Oh, if you prefer for us to leave. Indeed. No, we can gloss over that and talk about it later, if you so wish. That is unfortunate, though. Well, it's not as though we can truly keep our brothers over in the east from doing as they will. They are closer. What is a dwarven? <laughs> is that some sort of region of this country? I don't know too much on this, but there... Oh, is it still a desert? Much of it, yes. Much of it is still the desert. The glass. The desert. sorcerers are were changing the landscape, uh, repairing it. So dwarven is a desert made of glass. Joffrey sits forward and and he says in a very like professorly way, he says, uh, all of the dwarves they were people that were all wiped out uh, it, during the lost ages a long time ago uh, by a red court of dragons. They were a, a race of men. A genocide. It, it's complicated. I, I do not believe it's technically a genocide if it is one species committing the act upon another. It, it, it was uh, warfare, you, you see, uh, deep, deep beneath the earth, or where the dwarves uh, resided. and, and um, They're cave dwellers. This sort of, if you could call their you know, massive civilizations underground, simply caves. I, I, I don't believe it does them justice. So they had an underground city, or s uh, many cities. network of cities. Many, many cities. I and mean, these they... were turned to glass by the dragons. <laughs> no, the no. glass was uh, entirely unrelated. That was an elven thing. Yes, it, it was something that the elves did to themselves. We're speaking of, of dwarves now, Cole. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> uh, so a dwarf <laughs> and an elf are not the same thing. This is enough. Vesper casts you a look, <laughs> and uh, he shakes his head a little, and, and he says, um, a drink, and he looks at all of you. Several. Yes, please. He stands up. So, these dwarves. <laughs> Who are you talking to now? Joffrey, I Joffrey, guess. Joffrey, okay. Um, they have been wiped out to a man. 
there, there are no more of them left. It is truly a sad thing. And these people existed close to here? Well, yes, uh, they, we believe uh, with, with the studies that we've done that they were native to the southern kingdoms. Of course, this was long before, uh, long before any of us were here, supposedly. But the church doesn't like to specifically speak about that because oh, humans Official were created first. You, 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 un you understand, yes, you understand. Yes. The reason I bring all this up is that uh, long ago when I first returned to the Southern Kingdoms with a group of adventurers, not unlike ourselves, uh, we climbed down into this cavernous straight chute down into the ground, into the desert. Uh, Ash Ellison was pulled down under the desert level. It's not like that anymore. It's raised. Are you are you walking with Vesper? Cause oh, is like, he leaving? He's, to go get he's a drink? made to leave. Oh, okay. have you I thought he was getting a drink. Yeah, I'll walk and talk. Sure. Is there any specific role play that you'd like to do from this point? Oh, we cutting? Mm-hmm. We're getting close. You're gonna go have your drink with drink with Vesper. I'll just remember what I was gonna talk about last. All right. Next time. All right. So you're uh, you're following Vesper to go and have a drink with him in an elvish tavern. Talk that that should be that should be talk fun. Talk about dwarves. Yeah, I don't. In your defense, in like your character's defense, I don't know what dwarves are either. Yeah, I'm just, okay. I'm just <laughs> uh, we're gonna cut. We're gonna cut this episode here. Um, we're now gonna be in post game chat. I'm gonna draw up in chat room so everybody can see it, and we'll talk yeah. to you guys. <laughs> Hang favorite, out with you guys for a while. My favorite part about these games is like provincial ignorance. We're like, what the hell is, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, fantastic job. What's a dwarf in? <laughs> What's, Not once, but twice. What's, what's a dwarven? What's a but, but what's a dwarven? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. Is it like... An, is it a hill? I don't know. <laughs> we were playing um, the that Star Wars MMO, the Old Republic. Uh, I was playing with Jake, and they talked about Jawas, and Jake's character is this like, like posh sounding like Sith Lord. <laughs> and it's just like, what's a Jawa? What's a Jawa? Oh and, 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 and like and we had just killed like a hundred Jawas. <laughs> and they're like the 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 creatures that you've been murdering. Oh, that is their oh, name. That's a Jawa. <laughs> Oh. Yes. Well, I'm just then. like that's absolutely like, if I the could best, lick, like Sith Lord. If I could play. lick the blade off my lightsaber the blood off my lightsaber, I would. Jake would be a very oh competent God. Sith Lord, but he would not be very observant <laughs> of those he was murdering. Okay, here we go. Oh there you go, that's a lot of people. Can lot you of guys can you guys read that from where you are? Oops. Oh the little shit. <laughs> <laughs> In what capacity? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to get used to that. Okay. True dance productions. I'll I'll watch I'll watch the chat from over here. So, uh, thank you everybody who's who's here. Thank you so much. First things first. Um, yeah. First things first. The tarot. Uh, actually, so... yeah, we we do tarot every time. I don't know if we told you or not. You uh, didn't. We were gonna have you draw it, and we forgot. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> forget about that. Since it was your first time, uh, did you have a? Yeah, did you... Mm, you had fun? fun. Yeah, I had fun. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Okay. Yeah, dude. Bernard. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Bernard did fantastic. You did fantastic. Awesome. Let me give a round, little round of applause, everybody. Yeah, We're back. So, so so glad to have you. Promise, I'm not trying to be an asshole to you. <laughs> okay, so the the card that was drawn. Uh, after everything was prepared was the Ten of Wands reversed. Typically, reversed cards mean something bad. This one did mean something bad. But, I mean, nothing seemingly terrible happened during the session, did it? Yeah. During this session. Generally, whenever we draw something, I, I, I know what's going on. We, we know what's going yeah. on. And then it didn't really seem like it had a place to hold, to concrete. Well, hold. sometimes these cards that we draw, what they, what they predict doesn't necessarily happen in this session. But perhaps it's predicting your actions this session that are going to cause this stuff. Maybe stuff going on in the background and stuff because things going Vesper on in the background. Seem, I have no idea what's going on with Ash Ellis and. Mm -hmm. So it was the Ten of Wands reversed, and it stands for um, stands for facades. It stands for compromises, exhaustion. I guess that's the one I can think of. Graham. <laughs> it's just slipped in this whole time. Um, being bound by duty, uh, immense effort with no reward. And being taken advantage of. 
That's what this card stood for. Sounds like, just sounds, life. Sounds like burner. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I, I kind of thought maybe it might a lot might uh, apply to burner actually. So, so that's that. That's the card. We do this. I know what the call of every duty is. Bound by duty, and we do this uh, for every session. Smiling. Draw a card. Stop it. <laughs> Got to do your duty. God damn it. Do your duty. That's that. So what were you saying before I, I, before I mean, I, did I didn't really have any ideas for what that's connected to besides the things we've already talked about. Mm-hmm. So that's tarot. That's tarot. That's what we do. That's how it works. There are some sessions where it just tarot... Tarot is always correct, in my opinion, but sometimes it's really, really like this is happening this session right now. Yeah, sometimes it's very obvious what it's, what it's reading and sometimes it doesn't happen until later. You're like, oh shit, I did this. And the tarot was talking about that, and now these things are happening because of it. Yep. Sometimes it happens. Can pull up uh, Twitch alerts to make sure we're not missing anything? Yeah, sure. Self-propelling prophecy. Leah Sim donated ten dollars one minute ago, and the quote is in honor of Bernard. Damn, dude. Thanks, dude. You're officially worth ten dollars. Thanks, dude. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, that's more than. Typical. So, that's a little, so, thank you so much, yeah, Thank you for the donation. Thank you. My boss thinks of me. Thank you. <laughs> my boss, everybody. Probably. I was okay with that. Just and like that quick, if, my boss, everybody. If all you guys are still in here, by the way, before we talk about that, because that's a big deal, um, oh. Hofu followed us three hours ago. Angel Foxy 22 thank you, thank you. Welcome. Cubone well, Lover, thank you. Welcome, Cubone Lover. Um, guys blowing each other followed us. Okay. Nice. Okay, that's nice, nice. Nice. Um, fair. Willio3 followed us. Guar Stoneskin followed us. And PJ Stoneson followed us. Cool. Thank you. Hey, thanks, thanks everybody. everybody. Thank here. you. Thank you. Thank yeah. You if us. you're still here, that's 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 awesome. Thanks for that. Yeah. We Guys, do. Uh, <laughs> 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 that was like a great mental image. <laughs> right? Thank like, you. I love if someone's just like, I got a. I like how Vesper. Like a Twitch name. <laughs> Vesper was name? basically hinting like, I hey, the only one that would really want to. <laughs> ah, Bram, why did yeah. you do that, you. Bram? <laughs> that was weird. No, it's okay. It's okay. My Bernard's perception of Bram is so interesting. Quick now. I'm just like, no, like it's probably so front loaded. Like, wow, you must be like a super asshole, huh? Right. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm not an asshole, and he like goes out of his way to be an asshole. I've just been having a... he's not an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> just been having a bad day. <laughs> he's had a lot going on. Bram's had a lot on his plate. It's a big to be deal. Fair, there, it's dude, a big deal. Okay, there's a lot to talk about. The coal thing. Let's talk about that while, we're, while it's still in the chat. The coal burns don't stop when the game is over. Uh, congrats on getting. Oh no! Wait, wait, wait. Cole's just trying to get a raise from his boss. If by raise you mean like not dead, not, not, dead. <laughs> not murdered. Yeah. So in my fucking sleep. You've been trying to, which would probably be the easiest way for him to get you, since the since the realities are kind of blurred when you're asleep. Um, but uh, yeah, that so the, you've coals. been trying to talk with him for. A long time now, yeah, and you finally, you finally were able to speak with him, and everybody got to see that, that kind of realm of of Abaddon. Um, so it's not, it's not all fire, you know, and, and brimstone. It, it looks a little, looks a little different. Things, sure, things were still red there, but it's different, right? Okay, so I, sorry. In my head, it, I like I knew what it appeared, but I imagine like <clears throat> if you're. If you're like a general and you have to go and talk to the Fuhrer, and it's very difficult to get him on the on the horn, so you yeah. have to go in person. And yeah. Like you know, he already has like his idea of how he wants things to go. Maybe your idea is a little better, but you don't want to. You don't want to be like mine. This is the Fuhrer, and it's, it's, I'm just yeah. a, I'm just mind a demon. <laughs> mind demon. <laughs> um, so Cole's just trying very hard. To play both ends against the middle? Is that what you're doing? Is that what you're fucking doing? Is that what you're well, doing? Well, you see, I have very complex motives. Reveal everything about your character right now. Okay. Um, but what I what I really want is well, a little bit of latitude um, for open movement, so I can Fair. I can do multiple things for different people at the same mm -hmm. time. Are you yep. okay with cold mort? If we do an emote for you, that's you being kind of devious. Well, oh, okay that's with right. I Cold thought that. Uh, no, that's fine. That was that was where we needed to go ahead and ban you, Garen. Fair. I think it's fair. Uh, because you know, Q. Because that Q that's atrocious. Has a lot of experience. And should not be accepted. Yeah. Q, Sorry, go ahead and Garen. get on that. <laughs> not really. <laughs> no, Q's quitting. 
I'm putting in my two weeks. Four people would get pretty crowded over here. We have to do some equipment testing before yeah. the next session to see if it's viable, honestly. I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just kidding, by the way. Might have you, to, like, you're great, we love out. you. My, uh, my autocomplete is three words, Jake, I, and Bram. <laughs> That's weird. I guess it's because it's, it's, it's tracking what I've said in the chat, and I mostly talk about Jake in the chat. <laughs> Let's be honest. I, <laughs> I'm, I am dodgy. Save you, <laughs> Justice. Yeah, it's, uh... We have a bunch of interesting characters. Um, I, I like I'm the adjusting. fact that... I know. I like the fact that... I'm cool. Our characters are not... Magic not they're not so black and white. I mean, the party's not like, hey, we're a bunch of good guys going out to save the world. That's Right, and we're not like a not bunch of SS officers either. I and mean. you're not. Yeah, I mean, you guys, there's a lot of a lot of things up for interpretation. There's There are a lot of gray areas, like with real, Survival. normal people. I mean... Covering yeah. names in the legends, maybe. That's, that's different personalities scary. with different backgrounds, and here you are. And you all manage to meet one another. So I think that's pretty, pretty phenomenal. See, okay, oh, no progress. Grayson, I don't know if you're here, but no progress is going to need to turn you to a player badge so people know that he's... Yeah, you're part he of it needs now. A, he needs a player badge. You're part Get of it now. Now I, can't, now I can't covertly... Well, only people that have our extension, <laughs> okay. Turnitle TTV plug, uh, can see the badge. Okay. So, like, everybody who talks. Sweet. Pretty much. Sweet. I think yeah, pretty much sweet. everybody has it. Did you think Griffin was being an asshole on, to you on purpose? No. No? Just digging it? Um, mostly, like, uh, I don't think there was any point where you were being being really rude. When you walked past me, it, it just, like, it, when you walked past Bram, I mean, Bernard, it was kind of crazy because you're six foot six and, like, you just, like, walked past me without Whoa. talking to me. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's better than being, like, the, the, the door slammed on me again. <laughs> but, um, so. Mitha yeah, might have been a little outside, rude, but it's in, like, it's in, it's to, know. you know, she's going to protect it's herself, you know. I was, I was just like, hey, can I, can I see I know you? I don't know you or anything <laughs> about your life, everybody? but I want to talk to the people in your inside. house. Inside. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk to the people I saw go into your house. Excuse I don't know them me. personally, Excuse but. Me. I don't have any business with I don't you or see your family, anymore. but I want to know stuff about your personal life. Oh, okay, since that's <laughs> obviously not his voice, fantastic voice, by the way. I'm so glad that you're using it because it's, it's really, really cool. awesome. That's really cool. Thanks, guys. It's really awesome. Um, oh, <laughs> everyone loves you, by the way. Yeah, they do. The chat. Mm. Yeah, every, everybody. Mm. everybody. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are basically a Power Ranger squad. Yeah, I guess he's a Red honest. Ranger. You're, you're Red Ranger? No, he, oh, I'm Red Ranger. You're the Red Ranger. I oh. am. Because you have the Battleizer mode where you get all rage mode. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like the Skull Crush. I'm like the what? Look, the I like Blue fire. Ranger? The Yellow Ranger? I don't know. Yeah, what, what color is he? My Power blue, Ranger expert. What uh, color is he? Who, who, who's, who's the, damn, support, don't who's the support ranger, really? The support ranger. Chat, you can weigh in on this too. Is either the blue or the yellow ranger depending on the season. I said either blue or yellow. I like yellow. Um, and then I'd have to be like a. I'm probably. Like an Asian woman. I'm probably going to be the black or green ranger, also depending on the season. I could see green ranger. Green ranger's dope. Um, and then and then obviously Bram wants to be the white ranger. Of course. No, Bram wants to be like the um, like he he wants to like. Just get on top of the Megazord. Oh yeah, he's and definitely like, like riding them. But I mean, like, I can't blame him for that. Like, so that's dope. <laughs> he's got his little saber, his little talking. It's a dope uh, thing to want. Talking tiger sword. Does the um? Does the green? Is the is it the Green Ranger that has the sweet like pauldrons, or is that all? Is that the White Ranger? That's the original. Well, both of them have pauldrons, oh, but um, the, the Green Ranger. I love Power Rangers so much. Is, it, is that all the Rangers? I think we're missing a Ranger. Well, we're also I mean, missing Joffrey. There's, is he well, the pink he, ranger? He would, <laughs> is that all <laughs> if he's not the if he's not the yellow ranger, then he's the blue ranger. And okay. I believe that the pink ranger um well, I mean, I don't know. There's no like girls on the team and the pink ranger is always a girl. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. there's not a reason to have a pink ranger if it's not a girl. Let's see, for alligator. That was me. Perfect. I mean, you guys don't know Joffrey that well yet anyway. I mean, he might be the Pink Ranger. He could be. He or, might be. Or he could be like... Yes, Q. The Traitor Ranger. <laughs> who we have to... You, you shows the Traitor up. Ranger. There's also the Evil Ranger who shows up like halfway third through the season. Mm -hmm. And then you have to spend like an arc convincing him to be a good guy. Oh, yeah. yeah We've yeah. come full circle to what Ninja Turtle are we? We started with that a long time ago. That's right. And we said, don't do that. And now we're back to it. And it's okay. Because people... Obviously respect Aldris now. Thank you so much, everybody who stuck with yeah, us and really respects the world. You. We're gonna have an Aldris Rangers fanfic. Thanks you, Garen. Just you just send it to me when you're done. I'm so excited. Sweet. 
<laughs> Kufler. <laughs> so, oh my god. Um, that's, uh, that's that. We figured out the Power Rangers. I think we're done here. Yeah, I don't know. There's other stuff to talk about. There, the t-shirt. there is. I wanted to talk about that when we were done talking about the Power Rangers. That's an important topic. Because that is, that is important. That's absolutely important. The Power Rangers. So, for those of you who weren't here when we were talking about it in the beginning, <coughs> we, are, we have a t-shirt on Teespring now. It's a stay true, stay true shirt. So, you can use uh, command t-shirt, I believe. Just no, no dash or anything, just command t-shirt. And it'll, it'll show you a link. Um, I don't think that you can search it on the website. I think you just have to use the link to get to it. That said, uh, there's a picture of a t-shirt below the stream down there. Yeah, you if you want to see what it looks like um, and have the link right there instead of using the command, you can you can scroll down. Scroll down, look at that t-shirt. Remy is the pink ranger. If she's alive, just kidding, but we don't know. <laughs> but what about the um, the robot sidekick? All ranger teams have a robot sidekick. You know, like alpha. I'm sure she's alive. Hey, the nightbot. Is that is that a real person? No. That's oh, okay. that's the night the night bot. It's magical, it's it's magical night bot. <laughs> like, uh, my, 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 my it's, it's the robot night. Hey, like I was saying, I we we've already reached the minimum on our uh, on our oh. t-shirts, so okay. they're absolutely Don't gonna print. <laughs> so there's no there's no chance of disappointment. Um, if you if you order a shirt and then it's like oh we didn't reach our minimum so they're not gonna print they're gonna print. Uh, we actually it was really cool because we we uploaded the the listing. And then within like a few hours, we already reached the minimum of people, people wanting the shirt. So you can uh, you can check that out. Fucking spaz. Yeah, I think the next TM plays is gonna be tomorrow. Hey, what's our mm-hmm. like plan for TM plays? Dark Souls, Undertale. I'd love to play Undertale. Undertale. Really would. Uh, we don't have too many options available to us right now, but Dark Souls, Undertale, mm-hmm. other stuff. We're working on that. Uh, you guys should play This War of Mine. It's a great game to play and live stream with other people. The way that you say that makes me think that's not true at all. This War of Mine is pretty entertaining, um, but it is very, it is very like disheartening at times. Oh, that's why you're bringing it up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's, it's just because like you play a person in like well, you, you live a, a non-combatant in a major in a, in a huge in a major war. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So you like you like live you like live in like a, a bombed out building and you try oh. to survive. Gotcha. Yeah, and it's like it's like resource management, and like sometimes your survivors get sick. And that like, sounds like something I'd be super into. And you like send them out, and sometimes they they don't come back. And uh-huh. sometimes still sometimes sounds like something I'd be like, super into. Yeah, it's a really cool game. I actually recommend it. So I, I think Jacob is is actually making a suggestion. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> I'm gotcha. into you, Garens. I'll, I'll play Mega Man Legends on stream. Mega Man Legends. I how how, how I many stickers can I buy in one order? As many as you so want. Wait, you guys got stickers? Yeah, yeah. yeah we did stickers. Yeah, we got, well. yeah we were, it's like, do you want to add an accessory true. on here? Do you you have, can get a sticker. You, how long is it going to be before you guys get official, like, true neutral AA-12s? I mean, you, mean whatever, the, you mean the, the automatic shotgun? Yes. <laughs> whatever people are However <laughs> quickly we can grow, we'll start doing that. Because, like, once we get, like, a national armament, I, 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 I I'm thinking it. the next step is, like, coffee mugs, maybe lanyards? Not yeah, I think we have to throw some more stickers. <laughs> Random serious question from Chris. Actual serious question. How big are the stickers? I don't know. Hey, hey, Should we pull it check up out. It, it shows you how big the sticker is. If you go, go, go to the link. I'm gonna do it too. Put your no, trash saying, away, uh, uh, Garen. This war of mine. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm checking it out too. Is that when you rob old couples, or like whenever the Russian soldiers come in and be like, "Frau, come," and you're like, "Oh mm. God." Put trash in its proper place. God dang it. <laughs> checking it out. It's hard to. It's hard to bounce back from that, you know. <laughs> Fuck you, reality. <laughs> and the things okay. that have happened in history. So, um. It has two op. I think it's two options. That's kind of weird. It says your sticker. Your your sticker will be five inches or three point six inches by five inches. But then there's another option that says five inches by seven inches. So maybe you can get, maybe you can get both. Here, let me let me click. Let me see. Yes, there are two options with the stickers. You can get a big sticker or a slightly smaller sticker. True, they are my. So that's pretty awesome. Who is that? That's the guy that played you. <laughs> it was that, is, that, is that a friend of yours? Yeah, yeah that's Brayden, and he played you, and uh, that it's was when he was laughing. It's updating slow over here. <laughs> oh, it's oh my, okay. 
Yes, I mean, so... Uh, <laughs> what was that you were saying about the stickers? The stickers come in two sizes. Okay. So that's that. What am I a ruler? What is five inches? <laughs> None serious um, mode activated. God damn it, Chris. The true neutral dice trays, like, we won't consistently yeah. put them out until we meet that goal on Patreon. Yeah, the, the goal is 225. That's that's the goal we're trying to reach. Um, as soon as we're, you know, I would say maybe like two months go by in which we maintain that goal. Just so, you know, the craftsman doesn't make a whole bunch of those trays and then suddenly, you know, a bunch of people pull their pledges. Um, it, that would be bad. We have that about taking a portion of the uh, the funds and the goal mm -hmm. and then ordering one dice tray. Mm -hmm. Having them make one and then giving it away maybe next month. Just so uh, we'll give away one dice tray. Maybe generate some interest in... Yeah. Oh, dude, awesome. Oh, that yeah, tray could, is so cool. Yeah, this one we was could, made by uh, the same person. So? Yeah, the... I'm just reading the <laughs> chat where it's talking about magnum size stickers. It's like a picture of yeah, Jake's so face. Nice tray, isn't it? Well, that's why they did the mahogany yeah. hill. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, no. So, yeah, in case you guys haven't seen the dice tray in a while, would you mind holding it up so people can see it? Sure. Watch the um, mic, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, it has... This one This one has a lid. Would the craftsman may choose course? to give the one we give away a lid also, but it is a very heavy affair. Uh, it will be an heirloom in your family. It will probably outlive you and your children. Um, it's a it's a pretty hefty piece of work, and it is this one is lined with leather, black leather. Um, it has a little compartment for you to put your, put your dice boxes in, and it is perfectly sized. I don't think that he did this on purpose, but it's perfectly sized for Chessex boxes <laughs> for those, he those dice to go in there. Designs, and he was doing his research. Yeah, he, he was researching. He might have done it's that It's also got... It's also like screwed in. It's not just like glued. It is. It's yeah. it's a very heavy piece of work. It's not made with uh, completely made with quarter inch wood. Um, the wood the wood is thick on the sides and, and on the bottom, so it gives that solid sound whenever you roll your dice. And there you go, the solid sound. God damn. You guys, I see you guys God talking damn. about it all the time. Such a satisfying sound, says you, Garen. That's the, that's the thing. It's a satisfying sound. For a low, low price of nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> and, <with laughs> and with a lot of the other trays, they're smaller, and the All sound is kind of tinny when you roll in them. Three them. easy payments of $5, fifteen ninety nine. <laughs> One very true. complicated payment <laughs> that you have to mail back and forth. It's not true. You get multiple postage stamps this from three not, different continents. This is not true at all. You have to give and all your capital top rights up yeah, to you. You have to send me the social security numbers of all your family members. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's the face you make. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's Came out of the game. None of that is. None pop. of that's true. Um, it's his kink. Yeah, it's true. So uh, we require in-depth <laughs> personal information. No, that's true, and no um, king shame, indeed. Sorry, don't. No, they, so the the raffle control. itself, it's the king shame. Okay. you know, the one because I, I would like to I would like to do this soon. Um, what does the raffle apply to? Which one? It, which, which pledge does that apply to? Yeah, dude, go for it. You mean how people get yeah, stuff how, in the yeah? Pool? How hey. how are people entered into the raffle? Well, the idea is that if you have a certain number i think it's fifteen dollars fifteen dollars you're entered into the raffle automatically uh yeah. maybe one or two when we reach the 225 uh right goal. when we actually start when giving people, stuff yeah. away yeah uh, but there will most likely definitely be a way for people that don't like patreon <laughs> as a platform uh, if you just want to do a one-time donation to be like here here's like my entry into the raffle for the dice tray uh that will be an option as well because it, it's necessary. What mm -hmm. do you think, guys? Does this post to UK? What? I'd have to figure out those details. I'm not sure. Like, what do you, what do like you think that about that question? Does this post to UK? That thing's mm. heavy, so I'm not Does sure how is? much it would cost. Oh. Um, quite, uh... Hmm. It, it costs a fair amount, I think, yeah. to, to package it properly so Shipping it doesn't get banged around. We'll do what we yeah. can for you, you, yeah. you boy. We'll wrap it in duct tape and it, put, like, a shipping label on it. That's boy. what they do in China. <laughs> you, you, we, boy. <laughs> you, you, boy. You, you, boy. That's my joke for you, Garen. Stop! <laughs> he takes my do guys, jokes. Do you guys remember like in McDonald's? We'll figure it out if, if was, you win it. <laughs> this was the height of Yu-Gi-Oh craze, when McDonald's would would have little CDs of Yu-Gi-Oh oh. music. Do you remember? Okay, so there was like I think so. There was a Pegasus song, and it was really like it sounded like it sounded <laughs> like like Euro trash like dungeon music. 
It was like, welcome all my honored guests. I dun, 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 dun. think so. It was just like, boom, 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 yeah. Boom, it was basically like dark, like club in, in Hamburg, like where nothing good is happening. Oh man. But yeah, that was that's just a blast from the past. When we Excuse me. To the club. <laughs> all eyes on us. Flame bait remembers those CPs. Oh my god. What, what exactly is that? You Come on, say? Ashmore. I said I was sorry. I don't want to fight you. I'm gonna fight We're gonna you. have I, to fight mate. She, she, mate. she was replying to him on in mate. private on Discord, and she's like, "Fuck you." <laughs> like, I didn't F-U-K, even. I didn't you. spell the full word. I spell F U K. I didn't even mean it. I swear. Will you, will you punch him in the gabber? Will you slice him cheek to cheek? <laughs> I, I won't do these things. Okay. I will not do these things. So it's gonna be one side of the fight. Hey, there is oh. in the UK too. We have so many people yep. in the UK that like. Okay, us. people in the UK. Fight. We will figure. We will figure the postage oh, out. Wow. We'll you figure it out. Like, what, so. Three, three? Okay, no, I, I think it's like in the news. <laughs> They're eight hours Ten, ahead, right? Six, I believe. It's eight hours. Is it ahead or behind? They're ahead. They're ahead. Oh, okay. Six hours, maybe. I'm not sure. I I know nothing. No, Ashmore, no! I said I'm sorry! <laughs> We're gonna talk about this later in Discord. We're gonna figure this out. It was all over that, that stupid shirt. This shirt is tearing us apart. Oh yeah, we asked him his opinion on the... There were two versions of the shirt. It wasn't the one that I liked. And we chose the one you didn't like. I'm sorry. In what context are we European? Oh, uh, European style of medieval storytelling. Oh. Mm -hmm. Fantasy storytelling. Mm -hmm. Honestly, uh, specifically uh, Nor Norwegian, I believe. Yeah, right? I, I was right. It's, it's three forty-seven in the morning. We love you guys, everybody over in the UK. We love you so much. They get thank you. Up so late. Thank, thank you. Yeah, you guys are gonna be gonna be outside of European Union. Gonna be. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. that's return of the British Empire, right, that's, guys? I think we might. Yeah. Have, I think that topical hashtag Brexit. I feel right. like oh, that does touch it. The political rule it we does, have. It does. We don't talk about. We don't talk about politics here. Don't do that. We can talk that. about it later in private on a different platform. Yeah. If you want, hey, you want to like join us on Discord do. soon? Yeah, you're invited to Discord. Oh, sweet. I'll give you a link if you need it. Nice. You, Garen, that's awesome. Just limit raffle to. Oh, I'm not trying to stack the odds in my you favor. Start until noon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we love you guys so much. Uh, we we got, we got a T-shirt. You can check that out. It's gonna be around till Thursday. Thursday is like I think the last day that you can order it. Ne okay, next bird. Thursday. Not the not this coming okay, Thursday. Okay, next Thursday. Next Thursday. We'll see you next time. So uh, join us in Discord if you want to hang out ever. If you want to talk to the dungeon master, ask your questions outside of this. Um, next stream which we'll play is probably tomorrow. So keep an eye on Twitter. We'll that's, update that's pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Uh, Good night, guys. S stay true, everybody. See you next stream. Stay, stay true. true.